Oh, hey guys. Hi. Oh my gosh, it's so good to see some of you. I mean, all of you, <laughs> like some of you here is just really exciting. Holy moly, like it's been a little while, right? Oh, how's everyone doing? And Magnolia, thank you so much for subscribing for 13 months. That makes you like a phoenix. And I also hurried because I had to go grab the wingspan cards because I was like, oh no, what bird is Magnolia? And the answer is a European bee eater. Look how colorful they are. You chomp all the bees. Also mealworms, because one time when Chips and I were at the San Diego Zoo, we actually saw the beekeeper exhibit and the vet showed up to kind of see how the beekeepers were and she pulled out a handful of mealworms from a bucket and threw them in the air and the beekeepers all, like, they all went diving after it. It was so cute. And hi! Oh my gosh, Inkwell, hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Queen, oh my gosh. Oh, I hope your, your schoolwork goes really well, Turtle. Oh, it's so good to see you. It was so fun to chat. Like, oh, have we chatted in Discord yet about the new, uh, like Harvest Moon remake, because that's pretty exciting. And the new Harvest Moon too, or not Harvest Moon, the new Story of Seasons uh, remake of one of my favorite Story of Seasons. I'm really excited. I know, right? I'm really excited about that. We need to chat about that. I have a really fun idea for what I want to do to play all of the Harvest Moon, Rune Factory, and Story of Season games that are good. So the ones before Natsume stole the, like, the trade, uh, the trademark. And it's gonna tie in with our Stardew Valley series where we're basically going to play all of those really fun, cozy farming games, but we're gonna do them not in order, but like we'll vote on the order, uh, but we're going to follow our child because all of those games have a point where you have a kid. And so we're going to like get to the point where we have the kid in one of the Harvest Moon or Rune Factory of Story of Seasons games. And then that's when we're allowed to go ahead and start one of the next games. So some of them, if we're not like really vibing with that game, we'll have to speed run to baby, which I think will be fun. <laughs> So that's just one of the ideas that I've got going. Oh my gosh. Oh, Shannon. Yeah, you love that idea. Oh yeah. I think it would be really fun. Oh, Gardner Golfie, it's so good to see you. Also, let me catch up real quick. Oh my goodness. Uh, Queen, you actually happen to be, or Turtle, I'm sorry. I forget which one you prefer to be called by. Um, you happen to be the American Ava set which is a very pretty bird with a very pointy beak, which indicates to me that you indeed go ahead uh, and probably eat things out of the sand. Wow, American avocets build their own nest, but they will also steal other bird nest. I mean, why not? Somebody else already built it, right? <laughs> and Inkwell, you are a northern flicker today. One of my favorite birds because they are so freaking sassy. I really love them. They're very beautiful. These woodpeckers seek out ground dwelling insects rather than pecking wood. Very cool, but they're still like considered a flicker, which is fun, or a, a woodpecker, which is fun. And Bowling for Otters, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, let me catch up with that. Oh, hey, Mossy, thank you so much for saying that's such a cool idea. Inkwell, thank you. Yeah, I, I love cozy farming games, which is like a genre that has exploded since Stardew Valley reached its fame. I think like almost 11 games released in the last two or three weeks that fit the cozy farming, potion making, sometimes a little magic involved genre. And I am so confused about like which one to start. So I'm actually thinking we might taste test some of the cozy, comforting little farming games on our main channel. I might do like three or four episodes of one and then three or four episodes of another so that I can give you guys like a sample of what the game is kind of like. And then we'll just kind of pick the like one that seems to be most popular or we'll like vote on it in a poll or something. And we'll do a full arc of that one and then go back and do more of them uh, as time goes on because it, it it's a wonderful time in cozy video game era where I have too many choices. <laughs> Which is really fun. Oh, hey, Mr. Ollie. Oh, thank you so much. Heck, oh my gosh, 35 month streak. Oh, Mr. Ollie, thank you. It's so good to see you again. And today you are a magpie lark. I know about magpies. I know about larks. I didn't know there was a magpie lark. That's so cool. That's a, oh, it's an Australian bird if we have any Aussies hanging out in here. 
Expanding agriculture has helped the magpie lark, even as it has harmed forest dwelling animals. Hmm, so I think they do well on farms. Oh, librarian, hey! <laughs> Oh, it's so good to see you too, librarian. All right, let's see. Let me pull up another fresh bird. We're going to do something really fun with the birds uh, during stream, by the way. So, Western Tanager for you today, librarian. Look at that vibrant orange coloring. That is so pretty. These flame-colored birds are hard to see because they like the canopies of evergreen forest. That's true. I have found a Baltimore Oriole for the first time this year. They are vibrantly orange, beautiful birds, at least the males. And I saw a male. And I would have sworn that if you saw a bird like this in a tree, it would stand out. Like, you would absolutely be able to see it. And that bright orange bird was hanging out in the tree and just like disappeared. It was ridiculous. I could not believe that I was losing such a like amazing colored bird in a normal oak tree. Uh, they're, yeah, they're so cool. Crow's wing, you're probably a bird fan. And hey, coyote. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you've been enjoying the bug sex playthrough. And Luna Cat, thank you for asking how I am. I'm catching up with your chat, you guys. It's so fun to see all of you again. It has been quite a while since I've been able to stream for so many different reasons. Uh, but the patrons know, and some of you guys might know, the last, like, two months have been kind of chaotic in my family because my little sister is pregnant with identical twins which is a huge shock, like natural identical twins. And we've never had natural twins in our family. Uh, and she just had her son last year. So she has a one-year-old. So this is just all a big surprise all around. Uh, and it turns out if you have a twin pregnancy, there's a lot of things that, that you have to worry about and that can like be all over the place. So I've been really busy uh, like behind the scenes trying to help my sister and for a while there it was like really scary because we had to take her to like specialist hospitals and we were all like oh my gosh oh my gosh are these twins going to be okay and now I can finally relax I'm finally feeling my creativity come back I'm finally feeling like hanging out because the twins are okay <laughs> My sister and the twins are okay, and now I am counting down every week uh, until they'll be born sometime in late January. So yeah, thank you guys! <laughs> thank you for the congrats. I will go ahead and I will uh, pass those on to her, but I will never ever think that like twins are like an easy thing anymore, ever. And I feel really bad for all the Sims that I have forced twins and triplets upon my entire life because I thought it was a cute idea. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about using the fertility boost on my Sims anymore. I think I'm mildly traumatized right now. And even though I want to play our green family and have Fern Green and Jean Green have their adorable babies, I don't know if I want to use the fertility potions on them like I, I was going to. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, Inkwell, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the nest. Hello, Miss uh, Kit, or er, hello, Miss Cat, Bailey B, Fria Rose, Lustifers, hey Shannon, Tepis Wolfie, Poppy Blossoms, Echo Leaf, uh, they're watching, and Lilac Dewdrop. Holy moly, that actually sounded like reading out like a garden catalog. That was cool. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, the yeah, Teresa. People do far worse things to their Sims. <laughs> Your care for them is adorable. Thank you. Yeah, I, I've just always really loved trying to kind of like invest in the deeper story of my Sims and just hanging out with them. Oh, turtle. Oh, you're doing the short lifespan legacy. I've been seeing that pop up everywhere lately. And it's like the antithesis of what I do. So I'm fascinated by it because I cannot bring myself to move my Sims legacies along very quickly <laughs> because we're getting ready to have generation four born. You guys, I started the Green Family Legacy when there was that early access create a Sim release. That was that was when the first Sims came out, like the first Sims 4 
like game came out and we're on generation three and a half technically because I'm getting ready for them to have kids. <laughs> Tisha, <-shop>, hey! <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, you're fine, Victoria. Also, I just want to say to our amazing Inkwell, all of the people that you have dropped into the nest, let me go ahead and count one, two, ten. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I need birds because we're gonna do something cool with the birds later. But hello, Miss Cat, Trumpeter Swan. And then Bailey B, the short toed tree creeper. I didn't know there was a short toed, I, I feel like I'd be worried. Tree creepers scurry up and down the bark of the trees. And if I had short toes while I was doing that, that implies my grip is not the best and I would be concerned. Hey, Orbit, <laughs> I'll catch up to you in just a second. <laughs> but uh, the great crested flycatcher, which Chips and I actually saw in the trees around our apartment the other day, they're huge and beautiful for Freya Rose. And then for Lustifers, the Northern Cardinal, one of my favorites because we always have a beloved Papa and Mama Cardinal somewhere around us, even when we went to Hawaii, which was surreal. They're not supposed to be there. <laughs> And then Sharon belted Kingfisher for you today, one of my favorite birds. And Tapas, we've got the bush tit, which is a really adorable, cute little bird. Uh, that one, they live in flocks and single adults who don't have a mate will help couples raise their young. Bush tit, what are you doing? That's so precious. <laughs> So like the singles will be like, I didn't hook up this year, but I'll get some parenting experience and help you with your eggs. That is so cute. And then spotted tohi for Poppy. Hey Luna, 11 months, oh my gosh. The red-tailed hawk for Echo Leaf. Oh, another favorite. They're actually a lot bigger than I always think whenever I stumble upon them. European Robin for their watching. Lilac dewdrop. I have never seen my bird, this bird in my entire life. The orange-footed scrub fowl. Australian and Asian. What? The mound nest of the scrub fowl may be as tall as 4.5 meters. Pardon? What? Okay, that one's going to the side because I think we might, might need to look that up before we get into Minecraft. Uh, wow, all right, let me catch up with you guys. Sorry, we're gonna do something cool with the birds, which is why I'm kind of going through them. Orbit, common raven. I don't think there's anything common about their intelligence. Uh, and then T-Chef, the red-winged parrot. Oh, these ones are really pretty. They're an Australian parrot. And then four, Oh my gosh, Karen, twins run in your family? <laughs> oh my gosh, did you end up having twins or have you had twins? Oh, I, I, we've never had twins in my family, so this is quite exciting. And Wren, ironically, I don't have a Wren for you. That is sad, but I do have the black red start. And it's so good to see you, Wren. <laughs> All right, I think, and then Luna Cat, the red-headed woodpecker which is an absolutely stunning bird. I haven't seen this guy in person just yet. All right, let me catch up. And Coyote Frost, I actually don't do Splatoon because I just have never picked it up, but my brother, this is gonna sound really weird. He's not a YouTuber, he's not a streamer, but I would argue my brother is a professional Splatoon like player because he regularly places in like the international tournaments just for fun and I was stunned when I learned that, but he doesn't stream, he doesn't do YouTube videos, he just plays it a lot. And I think I was so intimidated knowing that he's that good. I was like, I'm just I'm just gonna let you have all the Splatoon energy in the family. <laughs> oh, hey, and chocolate bongos. Oh, I'm sorry you didn't get an egg drop. I think it freaked out, but don't worry. How's a little penguin for you? Those guys are cute. Those guys are really cute. This is exciting. We're gonna do something cool with the birds later. And Teresa, oh yeah, yeah, Teresa, I think I popped one for you, but if not, the Australian raven. How does that compare to the, uh, the, all right, wait a second. How does the Australian raven compare to the common raven? Because a lot of Australian birds diverged from the main line of birds like almost 30,000 years ago or like up to like 9,000 years. They have a big gap. That's why Australian birds are so fascinating because they evolved in like a, an isolated area compared to other birds for thousands of years. So 
Does that mean that the raven went to Australia and then became Australian raven? Or is the raven an Australian bird that left Australia and then colonized the rest of the world? We need to find out the answers to these things. <laughs> All right, let me jump in. Xander, yeah, cor corvids are really cool. I love, I love the corvids. There we go. <laughs> there, I think I caught up. Oh, Teresa, Tessa, I'm sorry. I, it's my first time back streaming and I'm just tripping over my own tongue. <laughs> I apologize if I ever flub your guys' names. In my defense, I will always and forever remind you that I I always feel bad about it, uh, but I did call my cousin the wrong name at her own wedding the entire night, and no one corrected me. So, <laughs> like, not just a little the wrong name. At least I didn't call her the name of my cousin's ex. That, that would have been hard. <laughs> All right. Oh, my goodness. Yes, Karen, I've heard of the bearded vulture, but I have not looked them up. I think that would be quite fun to do. But there we go. We caught up with the bird cards. Thank you guys so much for adding to the nest. I, I don't know where all our eggs went. I wasn't paying attention. And I think a lot of our eggs have, have rolled away, but we'll just have to let them hatch in our hearts, I suppose. <laughs> oh, and uh, yeah, so... It, it has been pretty busy and that's why the main channel has been kind of quiet. I haven't had like a lot of new games come out and I haven't been able to do the really intensive games like our Sim series or our Warrior Cat series that have like a lot of role playing and preparation for it. Uh, but that's because my sister is having these twins and then we were traveling a little bit and twins, t there was a lot of issues and now we're in the clear. And even when like, it looked like we'd be okay. It's amazing how distracted you can be worrying about that. Um, and then I just didn't have the creativity. But now that I know my family's gonna be okay, I'm gonna hold my new little identical nephews like sometime in January or February. The creativity comes back. Imagine that, when the stress goes away, the creativity returns. <laughs> and Ashfeather, hey, how are you doing tonight? Ashfeather, my friend, the common Kingfisher. Oh. That's fun. So what we're actually going to do later tonight, because we are popping back into Minecraft, is we're going to be touring Zudesia after I work on an autumnal garden. Uh, and we're going to be talking about the future of Zudesia, which I will, spoilers, uh, I'll just go ahead and spoil some of it for you guys. I hope it's long and fruitful. <laughs> I really do. I'm thinking of bringing my love of slice of life and cozy games and stories back into zoo crafting and reviving just a zoo crafting slice of life sort of series where we're going to have uh, a little bit of light role play element, a lot of fun like NPCs that just interact with the world. And we're going to add to the zoo and we are going to continue to watch it grow uh, and we're going to continue to add animals just casually over time no stress we're just gonna be happy living in the zoo um and my thought was we could start by trying to have a little list of some target animals to go ahead and add to and so i'm gonna dig through all of these bird cards later and we're gonna vote on one of these birds to build an exhibit for and it won't happen this stream just it'll go on my list of things to do in the zoo <laughs> Because I thought that would be a beautiful way just to welcome zoo crafting back. Like, just add that in from our first stream here in quite a while. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, Gardener Green, we're... Okay, that's really funny that you mentioned the burning to-do list. Because I actually have something to show you guys. So, we're sending out two stickers with our Patreon postcards for the Flying Squirrels this month. And one of the postcards, or one of the, the bonus stickers... I actually got this one printed special as a bonus sticker. One of the bonus stickers is the burning to-do list. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna make a list. We're gonna go ahead and make the list because winter is coming and I need to have kindling for fires to keep me warm during winter. So we're gonna go ahead and make more lists that we're just gonna burn later. <laughs> But it helps organize my mind to get me excited about all of the different things to do. <laughs> oh, hey, Raven! Raven! 
stellar day for you today, my friend. And Raven, do, like, do you live anywhere close to me in North Carolina? And are you getting all this rain or do you live along the coast? Also, I hope you guys are safe and well. Uh, we live about three hours from the coast, but we've had rain nonstop since last night and we're estimated to get half a foot of rain. So when I have the little title with the sign of hurricane, that's what's going on. So don't be alarmed if I suddenly disappear. I think that like we're on the third story. We're totally safe. We're nowhere near any water and we're up on a big hill. Uh, hurricanes have come through this area and we're fine uh, before. Um, but if the internet goes patooey, it's probably that. Don't panic. I'll come back when I can come back. <laughs> oh, in Virginia, lots of wind and rain today. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're, we're okay. Oh, hey, chocolate pongos. It's been raining all day where you live in the UK too. <laughs> Some sympathy storms. <laughs> Oh, hey, Frostbox! Thank you! Frostbox, I actually have some of your letters somewhere. I don't know if I'll be able to, like, dig them out tonight. But, Frostbox, the little bustard for you today, my friend. A very beautiful large bird that I think... Do they eat snakes? That's the secretary bird. It kind of looks like a secretary bird with short legs. Ooh, Magnolia, where do you live if you're so close to the beach? Because we're we're about two and a half, three hours from the beach, and we're two and a half to three hours from the mountains. So I kind of love where we're at, because then if you're feeling like a weekend trip to the beach, you can go that way, and it's a day trip. And if you're feeling like going to see the mountains, you can go that way. And it's you, you want to stay overnight, because that'd be a big day trip. But it's really beautiful in North Carolina to have like both of those options. I love it. Ooh, yeah, Luna Cat, I hope your grandparents will be good. Oh, hey, Lily! Oh, very sunny in Australia. You guys are settling into spring over there, right? It's been so heartwarming to see the pictures from our Australian uh, people in the Discord. And they've got like all of the seeds sprouting and all of the spring energy. And I'm over here like it's getting really cold at night. We're getting a lot of autumnal energy, which is a great segue into getting ready to poke into Minecraft and return to the zoo. Uh, because I would really like to go ahead and savor that autumn energy and build a cute little garden for autumn because I want to get back into zoo crafting. I really miss it. <laughs> oh, Magnolia. So you're on the coast too. That's true. In Australia, I could see how you guys would mostly be on the coast. All right, let me wiggle over here. All right, let me put these birds safely to the side so I can sort them out later. And I already have like some little list for zoo crafting that I've been preparing. And I have a so much to do in the zoo list that I'm ready for in my idea notebook. And then we'll try to spend some time just relaxing together, chatting, catching up, uh, planting a cute autumn garden. And then uh, we might do a little bit of a tour of the zoo. And because I had to rescue this Minecraft world from the Jaws. Oh, hey, Desiree! <laughs> Desiree, hang on. I never like dig through the birds for someone, but Desiree, for you, my dear, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna see if I can find one. And you know exactly who I'm talking about. I'm gonna see if I can find one for you. Okay, Desiree, I could not find a, a seagull, but I can indeed give you at least a bird that goes in the water, the royal spoonbill. Yes, I love this one. He's got a fluffy head. I should look up some pictures of him in a little bit. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh yeah, and speaking of which, Desiree, I also need to make a list when we're doing these streams, um, because I had to rescue zoo crafting from the jaws of a technician who tried to update like the version of Minecraft it was running on. We're a 1.7 world, 1.7.10 world. And uh, this technician tried to update it without telling me to a 1.12 world. <laughs> if you guys know Minecraft mods, that means the entire thing could have corrupted, including like the backups that it made of the server. So I had to like, pluck it out before the world was opened again, fix everything. And now it's kind of broken enough that it's just gonna have to stay a private world, like single player from now on, which is unfortunate, but it's gonna keep it safe. 
Uh, and that also means I need to go through and start fixing a few things. So we might make a little list of that. And I think, Desiree, making sure we have the right skin on your NPC wandering around is one of those things. Also, Alari, hi! <laughs> How are you tonight, my dear? I actually was just showing- Hey, Alari! Alari, wait a second! Hey! Hey, Alari! Hey! I just wanted to say... Thank you! <laughs> Thank you very much. I am. I have not touched this washi tape because I was like, no, I'm gonna wait until I stream and I am gonna show everybody. Alari was so cool. She got us the adorable Strabby Bug Snack plushie, and she also got us. Oh, I haven't opened it yet, so this is very exciting. I was legitimately drooling over this. The stationaries. <gasps> it's a leaf. The stationary kit. The little pinchy part for the pen is a leaf. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, I'm gonna use this in my joy journal. Oh my gosh. And then there's like little washi tapes. I use I use washi tape every freaking day. Look, there's two things of it right here. Every day, washi tape and stickers in the joy journal. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Alari. I am so excited to go ahead and like use the stationery. This is gonna be so much fun. It even has little tiny stickers at the end. <laughs> hey! Oh my gosh, backlog, really? Oh, could you go ahead and drop that in my Siri garden chat so I can remember? Because I really do love Senna Snail. Senna Snail like warms my heart. Also, I love the pins, Alari. Thank you so much. Uh, let me go ahead, Alari. Yellow build Kuko. And then let's see, let me make sure. Dun 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 dun. Uh, Akta, Akta, the painted bunting, which is a beautiful bird, one of my favorites. I have showered you guys with many a picture of the, the like pictures I've taken of these guys. And hey, Jack, it's so good to see you. <laughs> Oh my gosh, and Northheart, it's so good to see you too. Black Swan for you, my dear. All right, into the pile of birds you guys go. And I'm gonna sort through that and we're gonna pick a bird to make an exhibit for in Minecraft later. Look at my little leaf, that is so cute. Maybe I'll write with that pen tonight. All right. Hmm? Alari, we have many secret plans. I have not told the chat because We've been catching up on a lot of other things. <laughs> hey, Ziva! Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Did you just spend all day gardening? <laughs> Blaze Quakes, thank you. I'll have to see what's what's up with the um, what's up with the tea time. I haven't been on Twitch for months, so I was really glad that everything at least functioned. Backlog, yes. The name Wiglet means a lot to me. I am actually starting to get really excited about these new Pokemon because I love Smoliv. I don't know why, but I have become obsessed with Smoliv. It's literally a adorable plant all of Pokemon and I adore it. <laughs> all right, let me see what I've got all lined up. Apologies if I'm a little bit, a little bit scattered friends. It's just been so long since I've streamed. Aha. And again, if I disappear, it's probably the hurricane, but we're on the third story and we're three hours away from the coast. It's just a lot of rain and wind here. Uh, we'll be safe and fine. I just want to preface that just so there's like no panic. <laughs> but all right, so now that we have gone ahead and worked on all of that, are you guys ready to be back in the zoo? Um, Fun little, little emotional moment for me. Zoo crafting is kind of one of the main things that kicked off our entire channel. And now our main channel is getting ready to like reach 800,000 subscribers, which is wild. And there's a good chance that I'll be able to potentially one day show my mom and dad the like million subscriber plaque, which would mean a lot to me. Uh, but more importantly, I've met so many of you guys and spent the last decade this December building our adventures together. So this Minecraft world, whilst some might think this is slightly too much emotion to put into it, 
This Minecraft world represents to me some of the most amazing memories I have and some of the deepest roots of where we started and how far we've come. And that is why we're going to restart this, not restart, but like start back into this series. And I just wanna do life in the zoo. And I just wanna see how long we can do it. And I'm just gonna take it day by day. I'm not gonna stress about doing any fancy editing. I'm not gonna stress about what to build. I'm just going to focus on how to bring it to life and what kind of awesome memories we can make to make this world a hallmark of our memories. Oh, hey, Okami, thank you. <laughs> Rather than worrying about like, oh, are my builds impressive? Did I do a cool time lapse? Those things, if they come in time, awesome. But I just want to make some amazing memories here with all of you. That's that's the heart of zoo crafting to me. Is I kind of I kind of feel like I grew up here, and I want to just continue to be able to make a beautiful world that one day I could potentially make available to all of you guys to have a broken, wonky, chonkin like 200 mod minecraft world if you dare <laughs> so that you could stroll along these memories too um so that's that's my hope for zoo crafting just life in the zoo i mean i think by now everyone has done everything that one could do in minecraft in order to go ahead and make it like impressive uh so i think really the the arena that i feel is left for me now is just to make it a happy home and just make it cozy. <laughs> and Ren, yeah, thank you, Ren. <laughs> oh, hey, and Bowling for Otters. Uh, I have not thought about TwitchCon. I went to TwitchCon once because they let me feed giraffes and my little introverted self. Oh, hello, Duck Duck. You don't have a name, but you have a little egg. But my little introverted self decided that was enough. That was cool. <laughs> oh. Hey Lily, you started watching YouTube in the middle of the zoo crafting season two. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, Gardner Green, it's that mentality. If everyone's doing everything, I don't want to be the best. I just want to be happy. And I, I think that can get you pretty far in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, backlog. Some of the stuff people can do with redstone is wild. You want to see the most complicated thing I ever did with redstone that I'm still proud about? I shall show you. Uh, oh, hey, Blazequakes! <laughs> Hi! Oh my gosh, I mean, you've been here 13 months, and I do feel refreshed after the trip and after knowing that, like, my sister's twins are gonna be okay. Blazequakes, Rufus Owl. I feel like I should know something really... It eats parrots and possums? The Rufus Owl is an Australian owl that is large and will eat prey such as possums, scrub fowl, and parrots. I kind of need a minute to like get the mental image of an owl eating a bright colored parrot. You know, you guys, I gotta go visit Australia at some point. I think I would have the birding experience of my life. I love birds. <laughs> Oh, Lua Cat, I have read Quiet Power. I really love it as a great book for uh, for introverts, for sure. <laughs> and hey, Marty, I'm doing really well. How are you? And yes, this is Mob Mel Jude. He has been on duty for ages. He's finally gotten over being too shy to look people in the eye. Also, he shrunk. I don't know why he's short now. I think it's a texture pack I have. Uh, this actually is on the list of, like, actually, I'm gonna put this on the list of things to do in the zoo. Remember, friends, this list that we're probably just going to burn, as I showed you, with the special bonus stickers that are going with our postcards for the, the Flying Squirrel patrons this month. Uh, we're probably just gonna burn this list in the winter, but we need to collect kindling for the fires of the winter. So I'm gonna add to the list, why is Jude short? I don't know. Texture pack? I didn't do it. Maybe he wants to be short. Should we? Actually, that's a good question. Do you guys think he should stay short? <laughs> Here, let me go ahead and pop over. All right. Uh, da -da -da -da. There. All right. 
I like doing polls because it's so fun to allow you guys a chance. Th that's kind of to me what zoo crafting is all about is also bringing you guys into the world so that I'll forever have memories of you. Uh, he's just been wearing heels until now. Oh, Marty, I love that. <laughs> but actually my sorting system isn't really a redstone system now that you mention it, Olari, uh, because it it's part of a mod pack. I can't even remember the name of the mod pack anymore. But this gigantic sorting system you can vaguely see hiding back there. That, in fact, if I move this, this is the first time I've broken a block in Minecraft in months. I'm having such a nostalgia trip right now. <laughs> Bye, Ziva. Oh, no. oh, Jack, you love Jude. That's so fun. Jack, actually. Okay, because you said that, I'm gonna show you guys a sneak peek of the postcards. I'm, I have them out because I'm getting ready to put them away for our flying squirrels. Jude's on the postcard for the first time. He's right here. He has his time to shine. <laughs> There's a, a quick sneak peek. But uh, this complicated sorting system is the most complicated thing I've, I've ever built in Minecraft. It uses a huge variety of these uh, pipe systems and I made it entirely for plants. I made it entirely to make it easier to go ahead and go absolutely bonkers collecting hundreds of plants. And then the sorting system sorts it for me. Uh, technically it doesn't use like a fancy redstone. It just needed to be activated. Uh, however, here is the grand sum. Oh, thank you, Duck Duck. Do you want to have maybe a baby following you around? Okay. <gasps> Duck Duck! Oh! Oh, okay. All right. We got a baby. Whoops. <laughs> Should you... Okay, just literally at that moment, you guys actually answer the question, should you stay short with give him a pet? Are these his pets? Is this baby duckling now Jude's pet? Oh my. All right, should we name him? Should I, should, should, should we, should we go ahead and let mama and baby duck? Like, is that why he's over here? <laughs> okay, that's so cute. <laughs> baby duck duck, oh my gosh. Hey, golden light, it's so good to see you. All right, let me see if I have any name tags. I don't even know what's in my inventory. It's been months since I have touched this thing, you guys. Uh, uh, I have a bunch of bones. We might do a little sorting today because I don't know what's going on. I don't know what I have. Petition, <laughs> petition for the names to be letter and stamped. Oh, that's a cute idea. If we could do like some sort of postage theme names for the ducks because Jude actually like does postal services. Hey, Wessie! Oh my gosh, 35 months? Okay, hang on just a second. I'm gonna look something up real quick. All right, Wessie. So, 35 months. A, you're an emu, by the way. And that's kind of amazing. Cause like, I think you literally are the biggest bird that has been hatched tonight. And I hope you take deep pride in that. Uh, B, Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. So, Wessie, you would be the proud mother of one and a half elephant calves. <laughs> the longest animal pregnancy in the world is the elephant at 23 months. At 35 months, you would have had one baby and it could technically be on the way to two if I didn't know the fun fact that elephants actually space their children apart by anywhere from five to 10 years because their calves take so much work to raise. Uh, so they actually will have their baby and they'll wait like a decade at times before having another one. <laughs> so uh, 35 months is one and a half elephant babies. <laughs> oh my gosh, Thunder! <laughs> Thunder, thank you. Oh my gosh. Okay, hang on just a second. All right, baby duck duck, you stay there. Uh, okay, hang on. Now I'm actually really curious. All right, we got it. Okay, let me let me go stand with the chickens for just a second, whilst I look something up, because now I'm curious. Okay, okay, so. Let's see. 
I need to see this really quickly. Also, I wanted to say 35 ducks is long enough for 608 chickens to hatch. <laughs> So the chicken egg takes 21 days to hatch. So if you are now a subscriber of our little Twitch channel, like if you've been in the nest that long, let's say, then you could have 608 chickens. <laughs> That's amazing. Also, hi, Nim and Alari. Oh my word, Thun Lord of Thunder. Oh my gosh. Okay, all right. I have some news, friends. I am almost out of I'm almost out of birds. <laughs> oh, Moon Vice, thank you. Yes, we do have a lot of fossil and archaeology, and I do hope to have a dinosaur dig site in a minute. Thunder and Alari, thank you both so so much. Um, I'm almost out of birds, so please pardon me. Yeah, I don't actually have enough birds to to go through everybody so please excuse me while i go ahead and assign let's see do i let's see <laughs> it's still going all right all right oh <laughs> all right never mind backlog you just came up with the most amazing idea okay hang on a second i'm gonna i'm gonna have to yell so let me let me go ahead and gently All right, there we go. Okay, hang in there. We're gonna do this rapid fire. Smile, Daggle, hey! <laughs> All right, Wolfie is not on fire. The Montagu's Harrier. Okay, and then Gym Leader Levy, the Common Nighthawk, which is amazing. Uh, Monellian, the Californian Condor. I think that you just got the rarest bird in the world out of the list. Gardener Green, the Sandhill Crane. Good taste in cranes. I am a little biased because I love Cranston with all my heart. Available username, the Red Cross Bill. Golden Light, the Long-Tailed Tit. Absolutely adorable. Moss Shroom, hi, hi marks for your name, by the way. And you're the Blue Throat, which is a very, very beautiful bird indeed. Uh, and then <laughs> Blue, uh, Blue Ixa, the Australian. Owlet Nightjar, another bird like the bush tit that just takes a bunch of other bird names and smushed it together for themselves. I will have to investigate this one too. Berry Bay, the scissor tail flycatcher, one of the most amazing, beautiful birds that I've ever seen. Not in person yet, but in pictures. Also, I have screaming villagers in the village of light in our Zudesia world right now. I'm sure that's fine. <laughs> uh, Jara, the downy woodpecker. I'm gonna go fast, guys. I'm gonna save these bird cards because we're gonna do something cool for them. Uh, and then Annie, hey, Pacific Black Dog Annie. Sunflower Petals, the Gray Warbler. And then we've got the Red Waddle Bird for Terrestrial to Torvis. The Turkey Vulture, who I think is really cool because they have one of the most like developed or factory systems of any of the birds for Daisy La Rat. Uh, the Spangled Drongo for Smaggle Daggle. Hey, Smaggle! Look, this is important. You guys have earned a bird. I insist. Oh, whoa! Ooh! I just found out I have even more birds! I have two things of birds! Fun fact for those of you guys who are as avian obsessed as I am, uh, Wingspan is actually going to be having a brand new expansion. It's gonna be more Asian birds. Very excited about that. All right. The nosy, the noisy miner. What? I've heard that name, but I've never seen this one. For Slidsney. And then Liss, the Mallyfowl. 
The Mali Fowl. Could the Australians in our group please explain to me the Mali Fowl? If you could describe it in so many words. Franklin's Seagull for Daphne. Becca Bow. We've got the Maned Duck. I didn't know ducks had manes. Uh, red Gas Bass. The Spotless Crake. And then the Chewed. Whoa. The Princess Stephanie's Astrophysi- Uh, what? <laughs> This one goes in the pile of like, I gotta look that up because that looks really cool. Uh, and then, let's see, Coyote Frost, the ring build gull. I need to do something with the birds tonight, which is why I'm going through all of them. Cup of Peach Tea, the Greater Prairie Chicken. I think that's a really great one. Karen, the Bald Eagle. You guys know the Bald Eagle's like, like Hollywood voice that you hear in movies is fake, right? Like, you know the bald eagle actually is like a really squeaky bird, right? Because if you don't, I'm gonna have to show you. <laughs> All right, Mystical, yeah, Mystical, the brewer's black bird. Must Pelto, the European roller, which is a really beautiful bird. Let's see, oh, hey, Jack! Jack, how is the red breasted, breasted grosbeak for you, huh? Because that's beautiful too. All right. You guys are gonna laugh. Okay, Windfallen, the Horsefield's Bronze Cuckoo. I didn't know that was one of uh, the birds that existed, actually. That's a new one for me. And then, let's see. Wake Up Maggie May, the Vox's Swift. Very adorable. It really, <laughs> look how, <laughs> look at the shape of him. <laughs> he looks like, I don't even know what he looks like, but he doesn't look like a bird. Maybe it's because they didn't draw him with his little legs. He just looks like like a, a little torpedo. That is, he looks like a little Nerf like throwing toy. Oh my gosh, he goes in the pile of I gotta look that up. Uh, and then Volp howls the Anhinga, which we love because Chips and I call the Anhingas pirates. Phew, okay, holy kachuki. Oh, hey, Motormike, thank you. Sorry, I was going through all of my birds. Bad wolf, bad wolf. The Peregrine Falcon for you, and then Glitty Kitty is the Snowy Egret. This is so hilarious because there, thank you guys for your patience while I like went through all of our birds. Because I promised that tonight we would go ahead, let me put these guys down now. Dropping them counts as putting them down. <clears throat> but tonight I said, chat to celebrate the fact that we are back in our beloved zoo crafting world why don't we go ahead and of the birds that landed in the nest tonight choose one to build an exhibit for i think that this is going to have to be the battle of like the best birds because there are some of my personal favorites there are some birds i've never heard of there are some of the rarest and coolest birds in the world now in this stack and that's going to be a hard thing to vote on later <laughs> Phew, okay, so, <laughs> Desiree, yeah, whispers about seagulls, I know, right? Seagulls, seagulls are amazing too. <sighs> so now that that is all done, hello, Quill and Quill's clones. Um, let's go ahead and we're gonna look for a name tag to go ahead and name Jude's new pets, and then we'll get to work on our cute little autumnal garden that I wanna do. Oh. I'm so happy to be back in zoo crafting. It's legitimately been months. It's been years since I've really felt like, oh, this is really home. All of the little tiny daily things that I do are fine. Do you guys ever get like that? Like, um, oh, I have a name tag for just Nessie. Do you ever think like, oh, I shouldn't bother um, trying to do my creative thing because maybe it's not gonna be cool enough. Because I feel like one time I got a comment on one of my zoo crafting videos and this kid was really mad. He was furious. He had a lot of like angry things to say. I haven't been in here in like a year and a half. I forgot we had one of the quills over here. Oh my gosh. Yes, making our little decorations. We could get some decorations from our deco bench to decorate for the autumnal season. Oh, that's perfect. I will be back, Quill. Um, but yeah, this kid was really mad because he he said, you're not a real Minecraft YouTuber. And I was so confused. I was like, what? What's going on? Uh, and he left a, another comment and he said, 
real Minecraft YouTubers spend at least two or three days on their builds and they do time lapses. They don't just wander around and talk to the animals. <laughs> and that, that actually took the wind out of my sails. And I know that's really dumb, but it's one of the big like mental blocks I developed on doing more Minecraft videos because I do cozy little slice of life covering everything in plants sort of things, rescuing zombie villagers and adopting them as my children sort of things. But everywhere you looked, other people weren't doing those things. So was I a real Minecraft YouTuber? Was I doing things wrong? And even though I have a thousand, a thousand, I think 2000 episodes of zoo crafting, that was enough to throw me off. And that's really sad. <laughs> And I don't mean to share that story with you guys to, to like for a pity party or to be sad, but just to point out like it is amazing at how, how once you perceive the thing you love is not good enough by like other standards, the joy just drops out of the bottom of it if you're not careful about saying it's okay to just love it the way I do it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Ren, that's a good point. That, that sounds like the same kind of kid that would gripe about playing the wrong character class in an RPG. Yeah, yeah. And I think that there's definitely room for people who really want to mid-max like that. And of course there's room for people who really want to just watch a build. It's beautiful. I'm envious of the people who who watch just this this structure that is just built out of nothing and you get to just watch as it's compiled in these time lapses. I think that's awesome. It's just not something that has ever appealed to me to like do. Um, and there's room for everybody, I think, at the creative table. And it's just interesting how I let comparing myself to others get in the way of a thing that brought me joy. Like, don't do that. So I'm just sharing that with you guys as as a hope that if you're like, oh, I, I couldn't do that because I'm not good enough, that if it brings you happiness, do it. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, Monellian, I don't really, I don't really build. I just really love wandering around and like saying cool things about nature. Yeah, Wessie Rose, human brains are hardwired to like lock on to negatives. Um, and it is a good survival mechanism for when we were monkeys. Uh, and it's more of a thing where I think the more we're aware that we focus on a negative and balancing it with positives is important. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of shy I shared that story, but it is one of the main reasons, like, I, I couldn't make zoo crafting anymore because I kind of, like, froze. I was like, maybe I'm not a real Minecraft YouTuber. Maybe I should stop. I was having fun, but... I think as time has gone on and everything that could be done on YouTube has been done <laughs> on YouTube, on Twitch, on on like everything. I feel like everything that, that could be done has been done. So there's plenty of room to just let people bring like heart to what they do now. Like just if they're happy, I am more watching people on YouTube and their Let's Plays now because they're happy and and they are having fun with what they're doing. I'm I'm personally at a stage in my life where I'm not watching people anymore um, to see how impressive their builds are. I, I'm at a personal stage where I'm watching because I want to share my time while I'm working in the afternoon and want a voice like in here with me while Chips is doing his work uh, that's just cheerful and happy and just engaging joyfully in the world. Like that to me is what it's all about. Also, I don't know why I have flesh in my search bar. The mysteries of whatever Siri was up to a few months ago remain. <laughs> oh my goodness. I forgot what you need for a name tag. That's why I'm doing this. Apparently, okay. Slime balls, string, and paper. All right, I gotta find some some paper. I've gotta find some slime balls, and I've gotta find. Uh, let's see, paper. So I guess I could just rename this name tag. That's actually a good idea. <laughs> if I can't find all of those other things because I haven't been here in months and I feel like I just barged into a stranger's house, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> oh, Glitty Kitty, thank you, and thank you guys so much for your sweet comments. Yeah. 
Oh, Jack, that's such a good point. Yeah, you personally could never time lapse build in any sort of game because you're pretty indecisive and go back and change things several hundred times before you're happy with it. Yeah, that's actually what I found too. Like, and when I tried to do some time lapses, uh, just to see if like, is that what real Minecraft YouTubers do? Um, I found I couldn't really do good time lapses because there were long moments where like I would just kind of sit there going, did I do that right? And then I'd have to go back and like count number of blocks. Uh, and then there were a few moments where I forgot I was doing a time lapse and just wandered away <laughs> to go get tea or something. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, Raven, thank you. Yeah, I don't really think they're there's like a right way to have fun with these sandbox games. Um, I just think it's a beautiful thing to watch people have fun. And I think that, that that's kind of uncommon, unfortunately. Yay, hi Sunflower, how are you doing today? I know, I know. There's a hurricane currently battering its rain against my third story window at the second. Uh, let's see, all right. This is like hilarious the the lack of memory i have about what we're doing i'm relying purely on like my body right now this is like riding a bike that's what this is like where i'm just kind of like braced i don't remember how to do this technically <laughs> so i'm legitimately just kind of frozen like all right is this how you search for a recipe is this how you make a name tag <laughs> It's so funny that I've done this hundreds of times and right now I just have to like rely on muscle memory to like right click to put things away. <laughs> oh, Goose Bucket! You've missed Udessia so much. I have too. I have too and I'm really sad that I, I let somebody else's like random comment get to me so deeply. Uh, and I just overwhelmed myself with thinking, oh, I have to make zoo crafting like really, really, really fancy or else nobody's going to enjoy it anymore. Uh, and that, that once you, once you, I mean, there's one thing to be said for challenging yourself to do new things. And there's something to be said for trying to become a better storyteller. I want to give you guys the rest of my life dedicated to telling you stories. I want to build worlds with you the rest of my life. Like that is literally and sincerely my deepest desire next to spending the rest of my life with my husband. <laughs> like I, I love telling you stories. So there, of course there's validity in trying to tell better stories, but for something like zoo crafting where it just, you, it, it's just going to be happiness in a, in a block world that I share with you. <laughs> And we'll just see how it goes. All right, let me jump down. And then... <laughs> Wait, for real? Backlog. Oh my gosh. I You literally tricked me, Backlog. Because I literally thought that somebody really had recreated Zudesia in Planet Zoo. And I was about to have to like sit more down than I'm sitting down. All right. Let's go ahead and name these ducks. Oh... Gardner Green, thank you. You know, that's true. That's true. And I, I shouldn't be too hard on myself. Uh, and I, honestly, I'm just taking lessons from it. Like, I thought about it like this. Okay, so I got that comment. I was in a rough place of my life. Like, it was difficult to record that many videos. And, uh, like, with Minecraft, I also had to, like, fix Zudesia. I felt super overwhelmed with trying to make more episodes here. Um, and I was so worried that maybe nobody would like them, but I've gotten over that now. Cause like, is it better? I, I look at it like this. The reason I'm coming back is because I think I'm more sad. I didn't just kind of face that discomfort and work through it. And I don't have hundreds more episodes to share with you guys than I am if I tried and, and I got more comments like that. I think in the long run, not creating that joy just just because it's what I love to do, uh, hurt more than like if I got 10 more comments like that or a hundred more comments like that. And I think that's when you really know that you you love something for yourself. <laughs> hey, Zubat! <laughs> Zubat, where are you in the hurricane? I'm in North Carolina. We're getting about a half a foot of rain right now. Oh, Manelian, thank you so much. Huh? Oh, 
No! My bubbly water! Sorry, guys. I wasn't paying attention. Ah, there we go. Oh, hibiscus giraffe! It's so good to see you! Alright, so... What do you guys think we should name these ducklings before we get into our autumn garden? Ducks! Oh, Xander! <laughs> oh, that's so cool! So you adore birds with brown spotting, striping, or patterning? That's really funny because I have found consistently my favorite cat coat is brown tabbies. All of the cats I've ever had that have just taken my heart with them have been brown tabbies. So I'm still biased to like brown tabby cats. <laughs> quack one and quack two. <laughs> Let's go with um, quackers. We do already have a duck named quackers. Box and envelope. Okay. All right. I think we'll go with, um, with stamp for the little guy. And I think that stamp and then what would jude name his uh postage graham him crackers oh my gosh quackersworth i actually think we have a quackersworth too we, we will go down and we will visit with the ducks we'll go with a postal theme right now uh so i think i'm okay stamp for sure for the little one. Oh yeah you gotta put the name tag in there guys it's it's gonna be so fascinating to see just my muscle memory have to save us in Minecraft. Oh, Wessie, your favorite retro zoo crafting videos were the plant collecting expeditions where it all went off script and it took four episodes and we got lost in the jungle. It was just fun to hang out and explore together. Yeah, that's exactly it. Thank you. New habitats are great, but I'm there for the vibes. That's what I'm trying to say. I want to, I think I'm a vibe creator. That's what I do. I, I think, I am a vibe creator. If you want a mega builder, I, I can recommend some awesome people. <laughs> Mailbox, you know what? I, I wanna go for it, post or parcel. You know what, post, uh, parcel, parcel. Parcel seems adorable. Let's do that. And then let's go name these ducks. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. Parcel was really cute. I love parcel and stamp. Those are the ones that just really jumped out at me for these two. Also, our power is flickering. I'm gonna go ahead and name these ducks really quickly, just to be sure that everything's gonna be okay. Ooh, address, oh, Wessie. Okay, I'm beginning to think we might have to start a duck pond for Jude. Wait a second. Where's the baby? Where's Stamp? Oh no, Jude. Jude! Jude! I I thought that maybe he wouldn't wander off. I was wrong! We need to put Jude's pets like in a proper containment zone. Oh dear. Oh! Oh! I think that's Stamp! I think Stamp's already grown up and has somehow gotten on top of Jude's little post office. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, and thank you, Bowling for Otters. We, we should be safe. Like, uh, to reassure you guys, I'm on the third story of uh, our apartment complex. We are located in a very wonderfully flood controlled area. It's just gonna be a lot of rain and we might lose power. Oh, Moonbys. Okay, hang on just a second, Moonbys. You just literally spoke to my like soul. Uh, thank you. For, for that. I'm, I need, I need to screenshot what you said and I need to go ahead and like put that in my, in my joy journal later. <laughs> I really appreciate that. I don't want to, I, I, I don't, I am so happy for anybody who is able to find fulfillment in whatever way they do with creating content. But I really appreciate when people notice that I try to stay really kind of true to myself and I haven't pivoted and done like Roblox adopt me videos. Um, and that's not, that's not throwing shade at anybody who does those things. I think some of them have been quite funny. I've watched them with my niece. Um, but it means a lot when people notice like, 
Siri really just kind of sticks to the the authenticity of what she likes <laughs> and doesn't go off script just because something is popular. Um, and I just appreciate that because I, I like if I'm going to be a good vibe creator, I just want you guys to know like they're real vibes that I find. Also, I should put these duck, this duck egg away. All right, there we go. Okay, never mind. Now I've got a lot of ducks. All right, where was I? Oh, getting that duck. <gasps> is that the duck? Is that stamp? This is why I should have gone ahead and put the name stamp on them. Oh, Lua Cat, thank you. That's stamp. Okay, 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 okay. Also, sorry for the slight lag when we come into our house. This is little stamp, you guys. <laughs> They've been following us. That's so cute. I think stamp is actually going to be safe now that they're in the garden. Um, but do you guys think I should go ahead and move parcel as well? Parcel, this is a lot of eggs, ma'am. I think I might have to get Jude like his own duck pond at some point. All right, Parcel, you now have a name. She seems like she's staying there. <laughs> oh, Goose Bucket, that is so funny. Oh, Backlog, that is a good sign that you can't go off script if there is no script. That's hilarious. Oh, Jack, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm just like, sorry, I'm just like quietly screenshotting your guys' comments and just gonna write them in my joy journal and and look at them every time I, I stare at like YouTube and I'm like, should I do Roblox Adopt Me videos? Again, not throwing shade at people who do that. It's just not really me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, thank you, Zubot Chaotic. Yeah, my whole house is plants, plants everywhere. There's plants as far as you can see. Let me see if I can actually give you guys a quick plant tour. There's more plants over there. See? My petunias. We've got uh, the Amazon jungle is doing quite well. We have the passion flowers. They're not blooming anymore for those of you guys who are following my passion flower updates on like the vlog channel. Uh, but the plant is doing quite well. And then we've also got Kina! Kina the Monstera is growing. She's doing so good. Oh, look, I have two new orchids. I have two new orchids down there. I need to get a new like plant shelf. Uh, and then there's more orchids and some dying succulents I'm not gonna talk about because apparently I kill every succulent I get. Uh, but those orchids were at the dumpster of my apartment complex. Chips and I went to take the trash out. And when we got there, sometimes when people have things that they don't wanna throw away because it's like they don't wanna get rid of it, they wanna give people a chance to maybe just take it for free. They put it in front of the dumpster and there were two orchids in front of the dumpster. They are healthy as heck. They have beautiful roots they have had a much better orchid parent than I before them but it was that or the dumpster so I brought them home and I'm gonna try not to kill them <laughs> oh Marnie <laughs> excited for the day when we just can't see any of Siri's walls anymore <laughs> oh right oh my gosh whoa Wessie you give joy journal as an assignment in your high school because of the because of me what? <laughs> oh my gosh. That is like one of the coolest things I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, and Sander. Oh dear. All right. Now I'm going to just cry. <laughs> you guys are being amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I am so happy that we have found our way, however we have, into the little chaotic community that we are. I say little, even though our main channel has grown so big, I actually think that's one of the things I love the most about our community is because I haven't been chasing a lot of the games and the videos that get a lot of hype and attention at once. Uh, we get millions of views every month, which is good because I need to eat. Um, but we do it over 11,000 videos. So what that means is we tend to have a core group who really love the vibe we have and float from thousands of videos to other thousands of videos and watch a lot of them. And I love that because then it creates this feeling when we're all hanging out. It's not chaotic. Everybody kind of has the same vibe as well. 
<laughs> and I think that's really special because when I am saying the words like we have almost 800,000 subscribers on the main channel, uh, the, the mental picture I have of that kind of community is noisy, busy, chaotic, not because they're bad, just because there's so many of them. And that's why I really love our community because somehow we have just never lost that like that that gravity of the core and that makes me so happy. <laughs> oh, you guys are just so freaking sweet. I know, Alari, everyone's participating in the try to make Siri cry challenge. <laughs> also, where did Stamp go? Oh geez. All right. Stamp, are you okay? Okay, Stamp actually seems like they're doing okay in the garden. I think what we'll do is we will leave Stamp, who is now Jude's new pet, and we'll, Parcel hasn't moved, so I think that she's happy being stuck on the roots right there. Cough, cough. Uh, so I think we'll leave Parcel where she's at. We'll let Stamp stay in the garden. And then on the so much to do in the zoo to-do list, I'm going to put in Jude's I just had an epiphany. So, Jude is our male mob, but he's been our male mob for years. Do you guys think, hey, like, stay with me here on this idea. Do you guys think Jude deserves a promotion to head postalman of the snail mail village, where we can build a little village with cute little houses and a lot of post boxes everywhere. And then in that village, we can populate it with snails, which as you guys know, I am ridiculously biased to because there happen to be a ridiculous amount of snails. We could, we could maybe even use the, um, we could even use the NPC mod and we could have like large land snails who live in his snail mail village. And then when people, send in their adorable letters like this, we can add a new snail with their name <laughs> and we can have a whole village. I love that. Okay, promote Jude. Okay. <laughs> Jude's snail mail village. Also, what the heck was that? Uh, no? Who's yelling? Oh no. Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. <gasps> We had one of our puppies in here. I thought all of my puppies were scattered to the winds of the world. It's Tate, what the heck? Oh, Zoe, 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 what's wrong? Oh my gosh, you guys, hang on. Panic? Oh, oh no. Oh my gosh, Lily? I didn't know they were here, you guys. I literally thought Tate and Lily were elsewhere. Oh my word, okay, is it, is it? No, it's not sticks, okay. All right, where's my plank? Also, hey, Matt! Hey, how are you doing? I will go ahead and I will actually like say hi to you. Oh my gosh, good, rotten flesh. I will say hi to you in just a second. I didn't realize our dogs were actually over here. I thought they were elsewhere. Aspen, can you eat this? Okay, good. Zoe, Zoe, can you eat this? All right, we fed them. <laughs> oh my word. All right, Tate, you are the only one sitting down being smart. Oh, he had fish to eat, that's why. <laughs> Matt, hey! Matt, today you are the glorious house bench. I hope you're having a good time, and if you're in the path of this hurricane, um, that you're safe as well. I didn't know that the puppies were over here, or else I would have had them come and join us so they could go ahead and wander, like, while we're, we're going around. Tate, I didn't think you were here. You silly boy. I'm gonna go ahead and set him to docile. Will he follow me when he's in docile mode? Wandering, aggressive, berserker, tactical, docile, follow. Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh, okay, oh good, yeah, Matt. If you're in the Pacific Northwest, then you're you're in the clear. And then, let me see, Tate, why don't we go ahead? Yeah, wait, I just, Tate, I just sent you to docile. Where's Lily? Oh, there's Lily. I legitimately thought they were still over with the giraffes and the mini giraffes. By many giraffes, I don't mean like a quantity of giraffes. I mean, uh, like I have tiny miniature giraffes. We are gonna add that to the list. Uh, mini giraffe exhibit. Because those guys are actually from 
the really fun giraffe live stream we did a couple years ago to raise money for the, uh, the like, the giraffe, like, foundation. And I need to put those mini giraffes somewhere. <laughs> oh, Frostbox, thank you. Oh my gosh, okay. I think the dream of dreams for me is to have a pet iguana and instead of a terrarium, just have a room all decked out. Zubat, I knew a guy who did that. Like he decked out just one of his entire rooms and turned it into like an iguana paradise. And it was really cool. I think he built his own house so he was able to make it like uh, very comfortable. Because I, I don't think you want to put that much humidity in a normal, like, room. <laughs> but he made a really fun, really fun room for them. All right. All right. So now that we have a whole bunch of ducks, where did Stamp go? Guys, I don't know about this. I'm beginning to think I might need to put Stamp, like, in a more... Okay. I don't know. Stamp. I mean... I think this area is going to be safe enough. I'm getting just a little angsty about this because there's there's a lot of a wandering little duckling going on here. <laughs> oh, okay. So let's see. What? Desiree? Oh, you did. Wait, you had an iguana and it had its whole own room. That is so cool. <laughs> All right. So now that we have gone ahead and we have come up with the idea of Jude Snail Mill Village. I've remembered I have mini M-I-N-I -I giraffes. You guys almost made me cry with just joy and gratitude over how much you love our channel. And Lily Cat, have a good night. How about we actually get some things planted? Because I, and Lily and Tate have joined us too, which is kind of funny. I kind of find it really cute that these two decided they were going to call out from the doggy pen where I couldn't even see them and let us know that they wanted to spend time together. Actually, that's something I might want to change. I kind of want to be able to notice like when our dogs are in the dog pen. Do you guys think it would be a good idea to maybe swap these hedges out with uh, like a glass fence of some kind so I could kind of see our dogs? I think there's a time for it to feel sort of like, like you can't see through things because it's all green, but I kind of want to be able to see our puppies. I miss them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Marty, hearing Siri talk about giraffes made me realize Siri is becoming the giraffe version of a horse girl. I have an entire shrine to giraffes right here. And Jack, I still have that necklace that you sent me for my birthday, my 30th birthday. And I wear it like almost every day. Um, I'm wearing my peapod cat earring or my peapod necklace with the little kitty cats right now. But it's up there in the giraffe shrine too. I love giraffes. Yay, yeah, fall planting. <sighs> okay, so, ready. Uh, also, for those of you guys wondering, this is a experiment that I actually made in creative, so I'm going to be destroying it because I don't keep the things I build in creative unless there's a special reason. I love just the survival challenge, but I wanted to show you guys this concept because I'm hoping to start planting our Patreon trees and catch up on years of that soon, doing these streams. And one of the things I actually want to do and one of the builds I'm proud of is this little cart. They're little market carts for little market stalls that have little wheels. And one of the things I want to do is make a whole bunch of villages and bring them to life with NPCs. So this is just kind of like a test example of what that could look like. Uh, and I'm really proud because I made these cute little wheels out of DaVinching. And so this would be a violet's cart of violets. So there would be an NPC who would who would sell you violets in exchange for the, the currency, which I really like. <laughs> so actually, uh, before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to... I'm going to just... Forgive me, I have to pop into creative for just a second to get rid of all of this because I just wanted to show you guys the concept real fast. All right, let me see if I can fill this up real quick so that I don't have to, uh, close enough. All right, there we go. All right, and then, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys this concept really quickly uh, and then I will try rebuilding it in the future when we do some cool Patreon things. Also the wheels, I'm, I'm gonna keep a wheel. 
Because I need to be able to rebuild this in the future. <laughs> Backlog, you heard that as Violet's cart of violence? <laughs> oh my goodness. We haven't, we haven't delved there yet, but there are actually graveyards and things in the world that I need to investigate. Oh, and fun fact, Chips actually tried playing uh, Minecraft af after the first time in years with his sister the other day. And I haven't seen what new Minecraft looks like, like the most recent version. So I was minding my own beeswax, just kind of like sitting on the couch and watching him play with his sister. And uh, then they start yelling because apparently they walked up to what was supposed to be a village and it was full of pillagers and then they started attacking like the pillagers started attacking them and i realized there's a lot in new minecraft i have missed out on so i have been debating oops, and we can go back into survival mode now i have been debating what do you guys think about a um Okay, I got rid of that. What do you guys think about me doing like a hardcore challenge with new Minecraft? We could say I go through a portal here in Zudesia and I can bring back some treasures from this new world I'm gonna explore. Maybe I don't even set up a permanent base there. Maybe I do, we'll just see what happens. Um, but that, that adventure in that world would only last as long as like, I don't die. <laughs> Because I think that would be really fun because I have not played anything past 1.7.10 since 1.7.10 was the thing to do because that's where all the mods were. Uh, so I'd have a steep learning curve and I think it'd be funny to see how many attempts it would take before I establish a stable enough base that we could start trying to do some fun things. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, oh, Stamp is just chilling on there. Yeah, oh, that's exciting because you enjoy seeing people experience things you're used to. That would be pretty fun. Gardener Green definitely seems like the level of difficulty of Spore Wobble Dog's experiment. <laughs> Backlog, no, this world doesn't even have axolotls. So my, my idea is we could make different portals to the more recent Minecraft worlds using a little bit of role play, of course, that elbow grease of imagination. Um, and then we could we could have a branch of Zudesia that starts in another world. And that's where we're gonna learn about axolotls and be able to have like a gigantic lush garden full of axolotls, which I think would be fun. <laughs> I just think that that would also be really difficult. Oh, that's rain. I forgot how loud Minecraft rain is. That's okay. That's okay. Into every life, a little rain must fall. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna actually work on this garden now. Huzzah! Is that Stamp? Stamp, you're too young to become a parent. I I appreciate the gumption. Also, these are not even these aren't even duck eggs, Stamp. These are peacock eggs. They're literally peafowl eggs. They I'm sorry. You can do your best. Good luck. I'm I'm just I'm just gonna I'm not gonna question it. I'm gonna let Stamp do Stamp stuff. <laughs> I don't wanna crush their hearts. No need to no need, they're so young. We literally just, like, had them be born a few minutes ago. I don't need to crush their hopes and dreams at raising these little ones just yet. <laughs> All right, so let's see. I'm going to go ahead. I want food. I know I should probably be focusing on, like, color. But I kind of want to get... I want to get some crops in here. Nope, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make myself put some trees in here first. And then we'll go ahead and work on what kind of crops to have. All right, where is my... Wow. Wow. I'm having such flashbacks to being here. But this is where we belong, friends. All right, orange... Aut I have only one orange autumn tree? <gasps> oh, no. Ooh, and persimmon trees? Ooh, maple trees. We have a whole maple garden, but freaking maple trees, definitely, absolutely. Ooh, good, I have more maple saplings. Oh wait, I have maple saplings, orange autumn saplings. Maple saplings, orange. Okay, I do have some trees. Uh, persimmon trees, I, I've never eaten a persimmon. Have any of you guys ever had a persimmon? Those might actually be really pretty and fun. White cherry trees, mahogany trees, plenty of oak saplings. Um. 
pine saplings. Some dead leaves I could use as decoration, I think. Interesting. I might, I might start putting some of these trees out and see what I think. But let me actually take a peek. <gasps> Mushrooms! <gasps> of course! Oh, the woolly compass! It's been years! Oh my gosh. And then the pine sap. Oh, I don't think I want to put stinkhorn in here, though. The flat mushrooms, yes, please. The toadstools. Oh, how I have forgotten about these cute things, of course. <gasps> Guys, oh, how do you make a mushroom tree again? You have to have, like, the Ponzel special soil, right? I kind of want to grow a couple mushroom trees in my yard this year. That sounds like so much fun. Ooh, and Bad Wolf, thank you for the tea time. And Xander, my favorite thing about peafowl is that the male's tail is so heavy. And I just think that's really impressive because their tail is physically heavy. I, too, have a lot of something that I carry around behind me as a status symbol to, to lure my husband and confuse small children into thinking I'm Rapunzel. And my hair is actually really heavy uh, when it's wet. And so, I don't know, I, I, I like identify with peafowl and the way they have to lift that heavy tail and splay it. it takes a lot of muscle strength. It's actually quite like dense in weight. Uh, but that's one of my favorite things about them because I too, like my hair goes down to my knees now, you guys. You just always see it up because otherwise I'd be sitting on it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Zubai, I, I love Plant Mega Pack. Is there a more recent Minecraft mod that has as many plants as Plant Mega Pack? Because Plant Mega Pack, um, Biomes of Plenty, which has updated, uh, the NPC mod, this version of Pam's Cooking mod, the Da Vinci mod, this version of Carpenter's Blocks. Those are the reasons, like, I would never leave this world, because... Like, I, I mean, we'll go to other worlds, but I would never be like, okay, we're done. Let's move to a new version. <laughs> yeah, Xander. Well, it was really funny because the story behind why I, I joke with young children that I'm secretly part of the, the secret Rapunzel Society is because when I worked uh, in retail, I would have little girls come up to me and ask me really shyly why my hair was so long. And so to be playful with them, I would tell them, oh, you noticed, okay, shh, I'm actually part of the secret Rapunzel Society. If you let your hair get really long, then you could join the Rapunzel Society too. And it never failed to make them happy. I don't know what playful prompt as I walked up and down the aisles of my retail job made me decide to do that, but it was just so funny. And every single time the kids would giggle so happily that I just kept it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey! Hey, Kiki! Oh, I'm so glad that you enjoy our blend of science and our games and our stories. And thank you, Zubot. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I love all of the mods we have in this world. We've got a lot of cool plants. However, coral doesn't really fit in a tumble theme. I hope it stops raining soon. Maybe it'll be night and I can, like, sleep through that. All right, give me one second, friends. Oh, dead leaf piles, yes! Ooh, prairie broom. Oh, there's so much more. Oh, and twigs. <laughs> I'm so excited about twigs. Oh my gosh. And maybe like these dark green ground covers. It's been so long. What if we have to go on a plant collecting expedition for something? Oh, I'm really excited about this. And that's not even touching all the flowers. I just kind of wanted to get like stuff other than flowers out first. We have a surprising lack of orange autumn leaves as well. I thought I would have like more. We're going to get some birch leaves out too. Hang on a second. I need some room in my inventory. All right. Out you go, little things. Paper, my lemonade. I'll get my food out when I need it. Uh, let me go ahead and look at the leaves real quick. We'll, we'll see if like birch leaves match too. This is good. This is a good reintroduction for me to Minecraft because, oh, more maple leaves. There we go. Oh wait, those are different color maple leaves. I see. 
because it's been years since I've done this, it feels like. <laughs> oh, hibiscus. I know, right? It does feel like time just flies by. And then, oh, Jack, you've officially gotten the Rapunzel question from a little kid while out in public. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> You get you get asked are you an elf more commonly? Oh my gosh. I would love I would love that. All right. So, it's still raining. It's night. We're going to go ahead and pop up to our bedroom because I can't hear my adorable little Nintendo autumnal music. This mix is put together by Shadow at Noon, by the way, and they make one of my all-time favorite collection of just really cool video game music mixes. Usually nice, comfy, Nintendo-themed ones. That's right, you go away, Rain. One second, by the way. Real life still raining. I, I like, the, the hurricane storm hasn't even hit us yet. It's gonna hit us tomorrow, and it's been raining since last night. Oh, Nature of Gaming, it's so good to see you! Oh my goodness! You, my friend! Happen to be the sulfur crested cockatoo today. That is lovely. Oh my gosh. All right, let me put that away. Oh, Zubat! That sounds so cool. I actually have never played the Zawa mod. Also, okay, one second. That's, that's, huh. I'm gonna have to look at what, why that block is in the air later. We'll worry about that later. Uh, but I've actually never gotten a chance to play that mod, which is really glad, or which is why I'm really glad that I kind of exploded the basement. If you guys didn't know, let me go ahead and show you the role play that we're going to be doing for zoo crafting soon. Ooh, I forgot when I used to come down here to collect all of these, all of these gold ore berries. Oh my gosh. Oh, and we need to get like, uh, the, I can't remember what the name of our Professor Pigman was. Oh, I've missed... Oh, Experiment 909! It's so good to see you! Oh, oh, two unidentified eggs. Thank you! Uh, I kind of don't have the time for this at the moment, but I appreciate being given... Oh, I forgot I even had treasure in here. What on earth? Oh my gosh. Hi, Cal... Calberry! <laughs> Calberry, I've missed you! Oh my goodness, I had to take a few screenshots with Calberry real quick. All right, Calberry, so good to see you. Hey, Amy! Oh my gosh, Amy, 30 months? We just learned earlier tonight that that is like a whale. That you, you basically have had one and a half elephants. Pardon me, not a whale. Oh, Nature Gaming, thank you! And also, you are, by the way, Amy, a... Bagariar, also known as a parakeet. I totally ruined its other name uh, tonight. So thank you so much for joining us. All right, let me go ahead. Man, I have missed you, Cowberry. Oh no. Oh no. Oh dear. So do you guys remember how I mentioned that we're gonna do some of these streams as we get zoo crafting going again, specifically just to hunt out bugs and problems from when I rescued this world and a lot of things kind of went wonky. And we're making a list of things I need to fix. <sighs> it seems Professor Cowplant the third an assistant freezer bunny have been attempting to work on some sort of mysterious science experiment that has gone completely mm -hmm. wrong. Um. <laughs> has science gone too far? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's Steve Barry. Oh my gosh. Cosmic librarian. I'm going to write that down right in here. Oh no, oh no, I think I need to go and get, mm. oh my gosh, okay. All right, this is too much. I need, okay, no, don't, don't, this is creepy, stop that, you two. Okay, pardon me. Literally the only way to fix this is to mm. go ahead and do this. I apologize, I normally never, never uh, go into creative mode for this. Okay, assistant mm. freezer bunny, you're better. 
Professor Cowplant the Third, you're better. However, we're gonna go off script a little bit mm. because now y'all got me excited. <laughs> Now y'all mm. actually got me a little bit excited um, because I love the idea of Steve Barry. And, you know, since these two were clearly doing some experiments here, I think I need to go get another cow. I think I need to name it Steve Barry. I think I need to go ahead and add it in to the like the laboratory and say that Professor Cowplant and Assistant Freezer Bunny have absolutely been working on some cloning experience like behind my back and uh if anyone wants to make some sort of horrifying yet oh hey darling Mwah. okay if anyone wants to make some sort of horrifying version of like i don't know how would you do a steve cow that doesn't look that awful maybe just like a cow with a steve mask on its face i think that would be amazing <laughs> Oh my gosh, Pigment Fern! <gasps> Victoria! I'm putting that down too! Pigment Fern! So, do Pigment do like new things in the more recent versions of Minecraft? Also, we're gonna pivot and burn the to-do list, absolutely. And we're gonna go find a cow. We're gonna name it Steve Barry. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and add it to the lab. All right, where's a cow? I don't remember the last time I've had to look for a cow, so this might be a minute. <laughs> They're piglings now. Things have changed. Did they have they risen up and created their own society? You can trade with the unzombified version. Piglin, not pigmen, trade with gold. Ooh. See, one of the things I think would be really fun with the idea of like blending the portals together so we could use portals in zoo crafting to roleplay wise jump into other versions of Minecraft and just say that it's like a science outpost or an extension of our zoo in another spot is sending resources back and forth. So I have no problem with like getting rid of a bunch of gold we get here in this world, sending it to the other Minecraft world and just like deleting it from here, cheating it in there. Cause I think that would be really fun to like do trades between. So maybe we'll be able to get, oh, hey, there's literally a cow just hanging out inside of this tree. Hi, would you like to be none other than Steve Barry? Cause one of the things that I'm most excited about with um, like being able to do that portal system is the idea of making trades or sending animals back and forth. Ooh, thank you. Thank you, Michael. I'm gonna have to like look into that. There's bastions too. See, I'm so out of the loop that I think trying to do a hardcore challenge would be really funny because I mean, if you, if you guys were betting people and you were gonna take bets, how long do you think I would survive in a new version of like Minecraft hardcore? Like if, if it, I'm not going to be offended, you can say whatever truths are really sitting in the depths of your soul. Also, I need to go get string. This is so fun. <laughs> Remembering when you're like, I want to do one thing and then you have to go on a journey to collect like eight things just to do the one thing. I love that. It's just a vibe time. You know what I mean? 15 days, 30 minutes, 10 minutes, hopefully. <laughs> oh, evening low, high, an hour. Three days, probably 30 minutes. Until you need to go to the nether, maybe. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think it would be really fun to try that out, guys. And just see what happens. Maybe I'll have to give myself like a special goal if I want to open a trade post uh, back to Zudesia that I can't do it until I reach a certain level. Uh, also, what are you doing, you weird little thing? Ugh, I'll have to tend to that later. Oh, where's my shears? Wow. This is so nostalgic. I just haven't done this in forever. Okay, this is gonna be silly, but I need a minute to collect our Spanish moss. I think we made this Spanish moss wall to be able to have easy access string. My mind just exploded. Wait a second. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Now I'm feeling kind of old. 
Take some deep breaths, friends. We made this adorable little Spanish moss wall when we were, you know, little baby Siri, baby community back then. Uh, before... Before five of my nieces and nephews were born. They weren't even a twinkle in the eye. They weren't even, like, they were... Before five of my nieces and nephews were born. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Does that mean that this Minecraft world could petition for like a historical society permit? You know those little houses that people have and they have the little sign in front and they're like, this is a historical build site. <laughs> is that Zudesia? <laughs> Can we just go ahead and make this like a historical build site? Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. It's practically their godfather. <laughs> oh, practically. Oh my word. That's wild. A uh, pro tip though, if you ever live really far from your like family and especially young family and you want them to be able to like remember you exist, having a YouTube channel really helps because, um, my my 13 year old niece actually feels like she always keeps in touch with us because she watches so many of my videos which is cool she gets to see me like having fun and playing the cool aunt and i'm not even like there also steve berry welcome my friend thunder was that you who came up with the steve berry name apologies if it wasn't to whoever it was all right here we go. Hey, Cowberry. I present to you Steve Berry, who eventually, hopefully, I'm gonna put in the to-do list. We'll have, okay, sorry, sorry to whoever it was who came up with the name Steve Berry. Uh, I should have written it down. Otherwise, it it's not gonna stay in my brain. Uh, Steve mask, skin. Aw, see, this is what ZooCrafting's all about. Random silly adventures that lead you to adding cloned cows into your basement where you keep a secret lab filled with chickens. <laughs> it's, yeah, that sums up what ZooCrafting's all about in a little nutshell, doesn't it? <laughs> oh my goodness. Inkwell, is Steve Berry a cloning error? We're gonna make him a cloning error. Um, oh, I think... I think we're gonna say plot-wise that he was indeed cloned uh, by Cowberry because that has kind of been the running theme there. Also, I have to watch out for all these duck eggs. Oh, thank you, Bad Wolf. There's something in sunflowers. Oh, Cosmic Librarian, thank you, Gardener. Co Librarian, brilliant idea. We now have Steve Berry forever. Uh, and then there's nothing in her saddlebags. Huh. I actually forgot she had saddlebags. Sunflower. I forgot she had saddlebags. All of these years, all of this time that I have had to have these conversations with Sunflower about her leaving too many chocobo feathers around and I could have just made her carry her own chocobo feathers. Sunflower. All of those plant collecting expeditions. She could have helped me carry plants. I'm gonna need some time to think about this sunflower. Just you, you need you need to give me some space for a little bit, because yeah, I need a little bit of space right now. All right, let's go ahead and eat these two tail lettuce wraps that I got from the PayPal uh, little plaza. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll check Aster Seed. Maybe Aster Seed had them, uh, and. Let's see, so autumnal garden. I think I'm just gonna throw some trees around and we'll kind of work from there. I also think I wanna change the backdrop of this area by removing this fence and putting like a new fence that's gonna be a blend of wood and glass in here so that we can actually see our dogs and that we can see the river a little bit better because there's a pretty little creek we should have more landmarks. Yes, let me write that down on our list of things to do too. All right, landmarks. I'm gonna put a little asterisk next to it, but I'm sure the screaming villagers are fine. 
they're just reacting to how cute my puppies are that I left with them. I, I hope. Uh, but I think we need to put in more signs to have some specific landmarks. For instance, how many of you guys remember that uh, this... Okay, let me see if I can show it off. Oh, no! All right. Hello, Duck Ducks. How many of you guys remember the uh, YouTube live stream we did a few years ago where I hatched hundreds of ducks and shoved them off a cliff? This cliff in particular. And then they all ended up more or less on the, the ground down there. Oh, there's still some ducks down there. Wow. They just kind of like colonized that area and stuck around. It's Duck Falls. Yes, Evening Low. It is Duck Falls. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it wasn't as bad as the screaming peafowl episode. My ears still are ringing from when we hatched hundreds of peafowl because we were trying to get one of the rare white ones because they lay gold ingots and we needed them. It, 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 that, that, that stream, my ears are still ringing years later. <laughs> oh, Zubat. <clears throat> Actually, Zubat, okay, I have to look something up because you brought up an interesting fact. So, uh, you want to go back and watch all of the zoo crafting episodes, but you're positive that would take you literal years. Probably. And then let me actually do the math. Because every now and then when I'm feeling spicy, I'll go ahead and like look this up. So, if I go ahead... In July, for instance, we had 9,600,000 uh, views on our channel. And sometimes I get curious and I'll go ahead and look at the watch time. So that was 958 hours of watch time. And then, all right, hang on. There's 8,000 hours. Okay. Oh wait, no, that's 900. So that's 900,000, 958,000. There we go. Hours of watch time. And there's 8,000 hours in a year. So that means if you were one person watching nonstop the videos that would cover the watch time for July, you would have to watch for 109 years in order to watch the watch time of people watching our archive over July. That's not a humble brag. That's something I look up now and then to go, what the heck? <laughs> because that's wild. <laughs> it, 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 it's just something I, I like will, will do to remember like, oh, maybe I have done something with my life. Maybe, like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just July. Uh, so yeah, it, it could probably take you literal years just uh, to warn you. Also, we need some bone meal now. If I'm ever going to get like this beloved little thing going. Where do you find bone meal? Where is bone meal? Have I used up all of my bone meal? I think I've used up all my bone meal. Do I only have compost left? Oh, Victoria! Oh, thank you so much. I'm so sorry. Here, actually, guys, really quickly, I have forgotten because you guys, I, I got so busy. Hang on one second. Victoria. Thank you for reminding me. These are our crystals we grew together, guys. Ta-da. Yeah. And then we also have uh, Julian Jr. over here. And we have our yellow crystal over here. Also, I am wearing shorts, just so you know. <laughs> this is so much fun. And Nature of Gaming, you can check out our previous live streams. We made these uh, using a crystal growing kit, which was really, really, really fun. Hang on one second. I need to not drop this. And I took care of the rest of them off camera, but this is what happens 
with the crystal growing kit. Uh, like, I actually went ahead and I fought some of the crystals. They did break a tiny bit, but I took out that seed stone they had because when you put them on the kit, you can make the light come up and it actually makes them shine. It's not nearly as shiny in real life as it is on the camera, but I thought that was really cool. So I went ahead and I actually like tried to get as many of the seed rocks out as I could, but I couldn't get it out of Leafeon without breaking it. But they're here in the Hall of Honor right there. It was really fun. And thank you for reminding me because I actually need to put on my real to-do list I mean, there's so much to do in the zoo to-do list is a to-do list, but I need to put down a little note to myself on this origami paper to buy a mushroom kit because that is going to be our science experiment for August, or, or not August, August was a long time ago now. <laughs> for autumn, there, that's what I was trying to say. Mushroom growing kit. And uh, then I'll eat the mushrooms. That should be fun. <laughs> yeah, they're so cool. I'm so glad. Hey, yeah, Adele. Adele, I do have the P.O. Box set up. I think I updated the information on Twitch, like on the, the page with it. But if I did not, you can find the information on our main YouTube page under the About section, which YouTube has helpfully shoved to the furthest corner of a main YouTube page. <laughs> August 2. Oh my gosh. Hey, Pancake Cat. My day is going pretty good. We've got like half a foot of rain outside. <laughs> Wessie Rose. I, I will tell you guys. I thought, okay, Wessie Rose, I thought for a second you were saying when you said you'll have to tell us how they taste in detail. I thought you meant the crystals because of how often I almost accidentally drank the crystal juice. <laughs> because my drinks are all over here on my my desk and because when we were making the crystals i would reach for the crystal juice without like thinking to just drink it automatically so i thought you were asking me how the crystals taste and now i realize you were talking about the mushrooms yes and i i mean culinary mushrooms of course friends just to clarify <laughs> all right so here i am I'm ready to go, friends. I'm ready to plant these trees. Let's go ahead and put the trees down for now. And then we're gonna go on a search for bone meal. And we'll see how much of this garden we can actually get made. Uh, so fun fact, the this maple tree right here is from like apple milk tea or something like that. Uh, and it actually leaves beautiful leaves that you can't get anywhere else on the ground. So I think we're gonna plant these ones kind of where we want things to be a little bit more dramatic and thematic. So like maybe right over here uh, with all of the adorable, adorable snails. And like maybe over here and then a complimentary one over here. And then I kind of want to maybe do something over here, but actually like this spot would be good. All right, this is where I used to have trees. That's why there's pumpkins. We could use the pumpkins as decoration, of course. Also, I need some dirt. And then, ooh, I would love to grow some lion's mane mushrooms. Maybe this poo will work. Poo and compost should work the same as bone meal. Fingers crossed. I guess I could test that in just a second, but let me find some dirt. Uh, da -da -da -da. There we go. Yeah, I was letting my anxiety win. This is one of my comfort games. It's so much fun just to be able to create a beautiful world, isn't it? I think that's why I fell in love with Minecraft and Sims in the first place is because life felt so chaotic when I was younger and it meant so much to be able to make a beautiful world despite all of that. All right, let's see if this will actually work. We have uh, quite a bit of compost. No, unfortunately the compost won't work on these trees, but we'll try some of the other ones in a second. Let's see, and I have an orange autumn sapling. I only have one of these, so I think I might wanna go ahead. I'll put this kind of like in a special spot up front and then, whoops, oh dear. Oh my, that actually turned out to be an important special block. 
All right, sorry about that, sorry about that. Yes, I know that was one of my secret glowstone blocks to light up my yard. There we go. Uh, I'll put this one, should I, well, okay, I'm gonna put it right here. Does the compost, oh, oh, it made a small tree. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Forgot the compost does that. I might need to get real bone meal or just wait till the trees grow. <laughs> hey, sweetie, it's so good to see you. Oh, thank you, Alari. Thank you for adding the Steve Berry skin. I'll check it out in just a little bit. I really want to try to get a few more of these things planted. Oh, that's so funny. I like only had one sapling and went ahead and put it in a special spot and it's just small. That's okay. He's probably just right. Here, can you hold a turkey tail? <gasps> he can! All right, I forgive him. He can be as small as he wants if he's actually going to like hold mushrooms. All right, we'll just pretend like that they're not floating slightly away from him, but I actually think that's adorable. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh my gosh, yes, Jack. Oh, so how many of you guys remember when my whole house got cut down, when more of it was a tree house? Like, and now I have a more of a mixed structure going on. And we had those little Momiji maids uh, that my friend Ben had added in and I adopted a couple of them as like exchange students. And you could give them axes and they would automatically cut down trees. And we also have the tree capitator mod installed. So when you cut down the base of a tree, all of it will fall. And then the Momiji maids thought that my tree house was a tree and they cut my tree house down and like half my house disappeared. <laughs> See, that's one of the reasons I really love unscripted things and just letting things happen. Cause you just never know what's gonna happen. I didn't know that was gonna happen. If you were gonna script something and like edit it, it wouldn't be as funny when like really, really random things like that happen. All right, put persimmon tree here. Will you grow without? Oh, it did. Look at that, you guys. Oh my gosh, I can even rush the persimmons. It's actually, it's actually a little bit more jungle-esque than I was expecting. I actually think the persimmon tree is throwing off the vibe. Just, I, it's supposed to be an autumn vibe, but we'll see. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, they went on a rampage and murdered the fruit trees. Oh, we need to find that episode. I should probably make like a, if you're only going to watch a few episodes of zoo crafting, like watch these episodes highlights, just so people knew like, a little bit of the flavor of what you could expect. All right, I think I'm gonna put another maple sapling. I need to figure out like the tree situation here. Oh, gardener! Well, you know, it's less the wood and it's more the leaves that are kind of throwing me off because I wanted to do like all of these dark leaves, but I totally forgot I could just swap out like the wood. Um, I think I need more trees. All right, that's it. What about the maple trees? Ooh, the maple trees really work. Okay, yeah, the maple tree vibe. I'm here for maple tree vibe. All right, can I, there we go. Yeah, this is more what I wanted. I wanted more like these darker, like sprucey trees mixed in with some of the lighter color trees. Uh, so I appreciate the efforts persimmon tree. I really, I mean, okay, I'll leave it for a little while. Uh, but for now, friends, we need to find a way to grow our maple trees, which means I think we need to get bone meal. All right. Oh, Wessie, I loved the OG reptile house. Oh, oh, there's so much bone meal in here. Yes. I don't know what I killed. I don't know how I got this, but I'm so grateful right now. I had no idea we had that much bone meal. All right, let's go ahead and... I forgot how pretty this was. I forgot how pretty this was. You guys. Oh, I forgot how pretty this was. Okay. You know what? I think I need the other two types of maple tree. 
the red and the yellow. I think I might have some down in, in the zoo. That's just so pretty. I want more of that. I want more of that. Let's go down to the, like, autumnal forest down here. I may have used up all of my maple trees making this. Oh, they're all so pretty, you guys. Oh, Jack, do you recognize this sign, Jack? Oh, I love this. And we have, like, our little northern water snake. I even put in the info. I was just thinking today that I didn't make these little info things so that you could read about like what the northern water snake is like and what they eat and all that. But it's all here. I'm so proud of us. What the absolute heck? Oh, and the sign that Jack made, like, wow. And the little like least concerned sign. And there's still the snake over here just bobbing in the water. And then like an actual picture. This is a picture I took of a Northern water snake. That's actually one that was snapped by me. Oh, that's so fun. Oh, Gardener Greens, thank you so much. I just, I just screenshotted that. So it was season two, Aliens Destroyed My House, number 130. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it's the most complete exhibit that we have here. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay, so I need to figure out what if I have any more of these trees, because I don't really want to cut these down. I think I should probably have a policy where if we have an established finished area of the zoo, I should not cut it down. <laughs> We're trying to expand Zudesia, not cannibalize it in an attempt for plants. <laughs> I think that would be a good idea. Uh, these mod or these trees come from the apple milk tea mod, if I remember correctly. Uh, also, I need to add to my gotta fix it list. Uh, NPCs. I forgot we had a dog trainer here. What do you trade, Chantel? Ooh, pumpkin yogurt and duck, sweet potato, and cranberry for the dogs. Forest river trout, venison, apple, and spinach. Pumpkin, turkey, and peaches. <gasps> And some flowers, some daisies, and some toys for the dogs? What the heck? I gotta fix them, but that's really amazing. Oh, I forgot we had the syrup shack! Oh, delicious pancakes and syrup covered waffles. Waffles, pancakes, maple syrup waffles, maple syrup pancakes, blueberry, french toast, chocolate chip pancakes, strawberry pancakes, and I can bring them maple syrup, flour, fresh milk, or an egg basket to go ahead and like earn some money. I forgot about all this. Let me add to my to-do list, fix uh, autumn forest in pieces. There. All right, we're finding out like what we need to fix. Okay, so I'm gonna actually search. <clears throat> okay, nothing in our little lookout tower. And I think the dearest zookeeper like storage spot I have is right here. So if we don't have any maple trees in here, do you guys, oh, hey, there's a poison dart frog over here. That's fine. I mean, you know, finding a poison dart frog just chilling inside of your compost is normal. Oh my gosh, that place literally was overgrown with vines. Literally, I had to fight some vines to get into my zookeeper station. That is so on point for us. <laughs> All right, let's rummage around and search in this place. Uh, there's a whole bunch of seeds in here. We get to have fun playing like, what the heck is, oh my gosh, there's food in here. Oh my word, oh my word, there's food in here. There's honeycomb, <gasps> bees. Oh, we should add little bees into our garden too. What the heck, there's actually like pots? It, this is so surreal. It kind of feels a little bit, there's actually raw rubber that is in the oven ready to cook things. This kind of feels like having amnesia just a touch because I don't remember doing any of this. Some of this may have been done by your helpers, but most of it was probably done by me. Uh, oh, good. Look, we do have autumn orange saplings. Oh my gosh, we had a whole stack of maple saplings plus over here. That's wonderful. I think I'll leave half the stack so that I know where they are. Um, and then these birch trees look really pretty. 
The, the young autumn sapling, I only have one of those, so we'll probably want to get some saplings from it. This is so good, but we don't have the fancy maple trees. Oh my gosh, the vines are already growing again. Back, back. Hey, Rain, it's good to see you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, we should propagate some of the flowers. And then let's see. Inkwell, yes, yeah, so the on point of almost every game, amnesia. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's one of the reasons I have uh, started streaming, or not streaming, I started batch recording a little more carefully so that I can stop forgetting what I was doing in every series. And I'm taking better notes now. <laughs> And then, uh, oh yeah, Xander. Yeah, one of my favorite things about finding and exploring things in zoo crafting and zoo dusty or any of the Minecraft worlds are actually finding the places where what you're discovering uh, is just like a beautiful natural landmark. I, I always try to preserve those. And speaking of which, uh, hey, Rain! No, we're not, we haven't been posting zoo crafting on YouTube, but we're gonna start again. I have a, a goal of starting again. And earlier in the stream, I talked about why. All right. All right, here we go. You guys are about to get a poll. There we go. Should we go on a plant expedition to search out more of these maple saplings? Or should I remember for heck and high water Siri, we had a to-do list to plant some things in our, our, our garden and just make an autumn garden. Should we go forth and search out more saplings or should we actually get something done? <laughs> <laughs> Goose bucket, do you even have to ask? I <laughs> I thought it would be polite to at least ask. <laughs> I'll let you guys vote for a little bit. Uh, and then I'm just gonna toss some of these these things down at random. I am absolutely one of those people who just enjoys like an organic look to gardens. Um, if you guys haven't been able to tell. And I think I may have gotten that from my mom. Did I ever tell you guys my mom, when we used to live in Texas, she would just get wildflower seeds for the native like wildflowers and sprinkle them in the front garden bed. And it stayed in the front garden bed. It was really tidy. Uh, but we would get sued by our HOA, like cited, and then it would escalate for having mixed colors of flowers. And they didn't want to have mixed colors of flowers. If you had red flowers, they needed to go with the other red flowers. If you had like pink flowers, they needed to go with the pink flowers. And they had to be coordinated closely to the red flowers because pink is closer to red, not purple, um, <laughs> which was really dumb. And actually, okay, like I think we're all grown up here. So I'm gonna just whisper something to you that just like, sh this is just between us. It just hit me. That's when we lived in really deep South Texas. And they would always say, you can't mix the colors of flowers. And my parents are a mixed race couple. Just hit me. I was like, oh, wait a second. I don't think that was about flowers. <laughs> Just took like 30 years. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait, that actually, you know, now that I think about it, maybe they didn't care about the flowers. <laughs> Cause that was the kind of people that they were. <laughs> Oh my. Oh, oh dear. Well, I'm glad we've come a long way in the world. I'll just say that. <laughs> All right. And we're going to go on a plant collecting expedition. Let me just at random scatter some of these mushrooms around. And yeah, you know, that's why we should strive to be good people. I, I don't bring that up to be like dark or like uh, stir the pot. It just literally hit me like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> I think there was more to that childhood memory than I remember. All right, let's do this. Yes, I actually love the look of these prairie bromes for just kind of adding like uh, the autumnal aura to everything. And so let's actually make a new chest. I'm gonna make a new chest and we're going to go, actually, no, 
Yes? No. Sunflower, I am not going to put everything in your chest because you are going to be helping me. Hmm. <laughs> oh, Michael, one day I'll probably do a fresh world, but, uh, like, I'll never leave zoo crafting. My plan is to actually have some fresh worlds. Oh, good. Some. Oh, look at the size of that one. Oh, you guys, this is so cool. I'm not even going to, like, change out the leaves. Like, I'm not going to clear out the leaves between the spots. I'm just going to leave them be. Leaf them be. Ha ha ha. Uh, that's really cool. And we'll just like walk across the leaves for a while. That's so cute. Good night, Frost Fox. All right, let me see if I can go ahead and make another chest. But yeah, I do plan on actually like starting some fresh zoos at points. Uh, but we'll always have this Zoodesia as the base. And then we'll go make like satellite zoos in other worlds. Because I love this world so much. I'm actually kind of curious, and this is no judgment. It's just honest curiosity. Are you guys the kind of uh, the kind of players who prefer to like start new worlds all the time, or do you prefer kind of more like a legacy style approach, where you'll stay in one place and then you'll just keep like building? If you can't tell, I like legacy style, and that's just my preference. But I totally understand if other people prefer other things. Uh, let's actually do these orange autumn saplings for just a second. What was the one? Actually, let's... No, not the autumn sapling. Well, I'm going to do the yellow autumn sapling real quick to see what it looks like and also potentially to cut it down. Ooh, that's really pretty. Wow. Okay, let me go ahead and cut this guy down with the glorious grafter real quick. We'll get a few more of his... There we go, saplings. And now I have the wood I need to go ahead and make myself a chest. Let me put that all together. And then we'll put, this is actually a really pretty plant. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. Sunflower, my dear, you need to clean up your own feathers. I love you very much, but we need to have this conversation. Let me see this again. That's so pretty, you guys. Oh, I'm so excited to get our trees. This is gonna be lovely. Also, let's see. Oh, it depends on the updates they release. That's a good idea. And then Zuba, so uh, technically in theory legacy style, but you have a hard time sticking to a world. Totally understand. <laughs> and forgotten. So you start a new world until you find a habitat that you enjoy or a habit you enjoy. That's so, that makes so much sense. Like you just want to make sure you're having a good time. And then I find change hard. So I usually stay and can improve the world and find new places. Yeah, yeah, I... I it, it's just, oh, well, I think we're going to have to swap out the cherry trees, friends. <laughs> I need to be more careful. I need to remember if I want to go ahead and cut down any trees that are close to my house, I need to clear their leaves away because anything a leaf touches is counted as a tree. And I'm going to cut my own tree house down if I keep this nonsense up. All right, we'll go ahead and change out the cherry trees, except for that one. That one can stay, even though it's really sad now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe I need to plant a new cherry tree. I, I think I need to plant a new cherry tree to make up for like cutting that one down. Oh dear. All right, oops. This doesn't even count as a tree anymore. It's missing so many leaves. Oh, that's sad. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'll clean this up in a minute. I just wanted to have more places to like put a cute yellow autumn sapling. And I was thinking it'd be fun to have some decorative things right outside the, the kitchen. And then Jack, so it really depends on the uh, style of game for you. Sims and RuneWorld, you love your legacy plays, but in Minecraft, you often find that you're itching to start a new best Minecraft seed. That makes a lot of sense. I think it also depends on like your play style because because I like exploring, if I didn't have a sunflower, for crying out loud, all of these feathers, I love you, but seriously, if I didn't have um, such a dedication to zoo crafting, I probably wouldn't stick around. Because like one of my favorite things to do in um, Civilization VI, for instance, I love playing Civilization. And what I do is I will mod it so the world is huge 
And then I will just send my scouts out and explore the world and ignore everything else about the game. And then just keep restarting every time I get bored and I wanna like explore more. And if I didn't have zoo crafting to work on, I probably would actually change the worlds quite often just so that I could see what the beautiful natural formations were going to be because I would, I would just really be focused on that. <laughs> Oh, Moonbase, you also play Civ the same way? That's so cool. Oh, and Nikki, what uh, resource pack I have to make the water look that pretty? Let me look. Spoilers, this might kind of freak my game out because it always gets mad when I look at my resource packs, but I specifically have that resource pack for how pretty. It's the Doku Water Brick and Sand. So it's Doku Craft. That's what it's called. Uh, and then the sky is from Halclon Days. And then I have just a mix and mash of other resource packs. A lot of these, I don't have all of one. I took out the ones I didn't want and left in the ones I did want. And then it, that's why zoo crafting, if I'm honest with myself, it's a Frankenstein creation. <laughs> Just just to let you guys know. But all right, we have now made a chest. Sunflower, my dear, you need to carry your own feathers. Please. Thank you. Uh, no problem, Nikki. Thank you for, for asking. <laughs> uh, but let's go ahead and go on an expedition. Let's go search for some new beautiful autumnal trees. I forgot I have a whole bunch of them down here. No. I think we're gonna make a house rule that we're gonna stick to forever, friends. Unless it was specifically for the purpose of using as a tree farm, I will not cut down the rare trees that I need saplings for if they are in a finished part of our zoo. Because there is an autumn forest that I built uh, for our patrons' trees last year, and it is very pretty. We'll go take a look at it. Jack, I think like several of you actually have spots in here. So what is going on with my trees down there? For crying out loud, what are the swans up to now? Why am I missing so many leaves? What happened? Who took all my leaves? Did I take my leaves? I probably took those leaves. Because <laughs> here is an example of another autumnal forest. I have a feeling we probably aren't going to be getting as much of the autumn forest built as I thought we were. So enjoy this one. This is actually one of our Patreon forests and each tree, we're going to be making a lot more of these by the way, because I need to catch up on years of them now that mine or Minecraft is working again. Each tree is dedicated to one of our busy beavers or above. So like Haley planted that one and then this one is Treescape Traveler. And I love that because that's another reason I wouldn't move to a new world because this world is so full of so many of those memories that we have made of people helping to bring our community to life. A Touch of Maple Autumn Gardens, created by our garden hedgehogs and busy beavers, November, 2020. Oh, that was longer than a year ago. Oh, wow. Oh. I like felt that, like that was like a punch to my gut. <laughs> like, oh, I thought that was just last month and it was two years ago. Okay, hey, it's Jack, 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 Jack. It's it's Jack, Jack the Fox, the Berry Fox Hollow discovered by Nakia. Oh my gosh, I gotta build more of these. We'll be building a lot more of these in the future. Um, Now that we're doing our streaming again. Ooh, what the heck? I should have come here for autumnal motivation. What am I doing? Past Siri was so on this. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna like grab some of these trilliums. Can I get this trillium? Oh, I thought you could just bone mill the trilliums. I think you can try to like, you can try to propagate the plants by just putting them down and picking them up again. I don't think it's working. I think I need to go get more plants. Oh, I got one. <laughs> The deceiving trillium. Okay, uh, probably, probably like a last resort. Uh, yeah, actually, I can't cut these trees down. They're literally dedicated to everybody, so these trees are protected. Like I will have to go to zoo crafting jail forever if I cut these trees down. Oh hey, Victoria. Oh, oh Victoria, I'm so sorry. 
Yeah, that was really tricky. My mom is also uh, in a wheelchair. So whenever we go out, she, she, she's been wheelchair bound for many years, ever since I was a young teenager. Um, and I always see the world differently now. Everywhere I go, I automatically look for the slopes. I automatically look for the handicap parking. I, I scowl if I walk in a shop that has like a ledge like this because my mom wouldn't be able to go into it. So I'm really sorry about that. And I hope that more gardens open up for you and we can at least offer you some beautiful nature here. Uh, but yes, and then, oh, hey, Adelaide, yes. Okay, your tree's probably in here somewhere. Uh, so I actually am so relieved because I thought I was gonna just have to look really silly, literally standing on top of the trees we could use to go ahead and do the autumn garden. But legitimately every single one of these trees is protected and I cannot cut them down. And I am so relieved about that. <laughs> Oh, planted by Beth. Oh, Wren! Hey, Wren, I don't know if you're still around. But we got a, we got a Wren tree. And then I made these little, like, mixed podzel and soil ponds. This was really cool. This was one of the only, like, time-lapse videos I ever made. And uh, it was a lot of work. It was so much work, I was like, I don't want to do that again. But it was really fun. And I let my creative energy out for this. And then let me go ahead. All right, let me let me pick a direction. It looks like there's some autumny things there. Do I have That's the vast jungle. This is the biggest Minecraft jungle I've ever found. Oh man, we've got so many spots where we've just got to like renew our map because when I had to save the world, there's another beautiful autumnal spot. When I had to save the world, um I lost my journey map. So all of this like is just where I've like teleported in. Wow, a lot of people went south, didn't they? Oh my gosh, I've been down here too. Oh, hey, Nearney's place. Wow. So there's a big ocean down there. I guess everybody was south of me and I never realized it because I never dragged my journey map that far. Uh, but I think maybe we'll go north to like this spot. And I think we'll probably just finish up with trying to keep going tonight until we find a maple spot. So, uh, where should we go? I think north or east or west. But I don't think south because that's where the old bases are. So I, I'm, I'm going to try to leave those parts of the world kind of untouched so that I don't don't step on what other people have created in the past. Oh, hey, Dr. Guinea Pig! Oh my gosh, Gardener Green? You just had a big brain moment uh, that I actually am going to do for zoo crafting. One of my goals for zoo crafting, once we get like the portal event going is to actually have crossovers from our other series using retextures of the mobs that exist in this version of zoo crafting and retexturing it with the npc mod so that i can create things like honey mint from our slime rancher series by grabbing one of the slimes here and trying to make it look like honey mint and they'll look a little different since clearly like the tabby Largo would be hard to display in a literal cube slime. Uh, but I want to try to import a lot of those animals or creatures from other series and even say that they their DNA shifted during transport. And so they look a little different. So maybe they're even a different species, but we'll still give them that name. So it'll be like, no, this is our precious like Rose Stone, the horse from our Star Stable series. Now she's here at our farm. We're going to have a lot of crossovers like that because my hope is to really make Zudesia a map of memories. So when we, in the future, pull up this journey map, my hope is it won't just be this little teensy area that we have memories and we have all of these builds of the zoo. I want it to, to spread everywhere so that we have the Patreon tree forest, so that we've got uh, the villages where we have had the NPCs end up having families and stories that evolved using random generators. And 
I want to have uh, like monuments to the other series we've played and the other things we've done in other series pop up too. Oh. Oh, Victoria. I think that's really, really wonderful. And then, <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, Amy, thank you. Yeah, like adding some nichelings. That would be so much fun to like turn the nichelings into like the wolf model, for instance, and put them in there. Can you guys imagine we had Tata as a, a trickster peafowl, but how much fun it would be to like add Tata and banana -na 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 to like a banana orchard that we could build. That would be really fun. Oh my gosh. All right. Oh, Desiree, I'm so glad you love ooblets. I have a lot of ooblets going on. Uh, okay, a fruit garden dedicated to bug snacks. That's so cute. Yeah, I would want to do that for sure. Uh, and then north. Okay, so we're gonna head north. Sorry about that. And then let's go ahead. All right, sorry, I had to double check some things. All right, so we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna head north as soon as I figure out which direction north is. Oh, I know what we'll do. We're gonna try to aim for this little teleportation spot so can i make a new tele yes okay to autumn and then we're just gonna save that and then we're gonna try to go ahead aha uh -huh, there we go we've got a waypoint friends oh wobble dogs yes you guys we should put in wobble dogs like stacy had her absolutely oh, oh wait am i safe hang on wait 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 Wait, wait, wait. I love Stacy's wolves, by the way. It'd be fun. They're just retextured wolves, so I could probably add in some of hers to our world. How many of you guys remember that dog quest series? I'm still proud of that. Also, I don't have any of my armor. Where did all my armor go? Where did I put it? I, okay. Like we're about to leave the safety of the zoo. The Zudesia area has some special totems that we installed because we claimed this land that keep hostile mobs at bay, but they still exist in this world. Where's my, where's my sort of light? Probably with my armor. Do I have, okay, I have arrows. I have my bow. My bow doesn't even have, it has infinity, unbreaking, punch, power, flame, and it doesn't even have a name. I'm carrying a lot of rare things. This will be fine. This will be fine. Oh, Michael, thank you. So armor was in, in a chest. There was some armor that wasn't the, the leaf armor I normally wear, but we're gonna have to see. Also evening, have a great night. Maybe you put the armor. Yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll try to find that. Oi, load. Don't be, don't be clunky chunky. Oh man, actually, you guys, we might have to take some breaks on our way there because I think we're gonna have to teach the world how to load again for the first time in like two years. All right, well, oh wow, there's a lot of pigs down there. See, one of the things I've been thinking about is we could grab like the, the miscellaneous pigs and cows and we could trade them to a farmer NPC uh, for like zoo points that we could go ahead and get like statues to different animals or a new helpful trading in PC. I want to find ways where we can integrate that mix of light roleplay and the trading system. Oh, wow. I didn't even know we had willows over here so that we can kind of bring the world to life a little bit more and then make certain things easier for us to get. Like how many pigs do I need to trade before somebody will give me just plants. Ooh, wait a second. Have we ever explored this? Oh, it's got a cute little tree. Oh, that's like Siri bait. It literally has Siri bait. Oh man, do you guys think I should explore it? These things often have traps, but I have my, my leaf boots on. I'm sure. <laughs> All right, I'm sure just having booties on is enough, right? Right? I'm not gonna regret this, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. And then let's go ahead. Yeah, I love I love adding more role play in it. Alright, I'm gonna actually explore this. This is 
uh, potentially a little bit dangerous. Also, Sunflower, I think I went the wrong way. What is this tree? I want to see what this... It's so cute. No, come back. It's an acacia sapling in a cute little flower pot. I love it. All right, can I get in here? Have I raided this tower or not? We're going to find out. Sometimes these things... Okay, that's definitely a trap. That's a trap. That's a trap. Sometimes these things have dynamite. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Oh, man. We haven't been here before. This is new. You guys. What did we just find? The painful gold sword. Okay. I mean, it looks really cool. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with that. Cool. Why am I holding it backwards? <laughs> is that why it's painful? <laughs> Do you hold the sword by the freaking like pointy end? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. That's why it's painful. Because you hold it by the blade and you swing it by the blade. That's hilarious. Okay. Maybe I'm going to, like, try to find wherever I put my Sword of Light instead of keep that thing. So that's why it's painful. All right. Learned my lesson. Thank you. Can I please have this display case? Yes, please. Okay, good. All right. That's actually really cool because I actually don't have a way to get these display pedals, pedestals. They don't have... Oh, they do have a recipe. Never mind. I have a way to get these display pedestals. <clears throat> All right. So there's a trap over there. I think that's just an enchanting table. All right, what about the basement? All right, I think we're good. Okay, I think we're good. There's a few things that are traps and I think I might actually accidentally activate this trap. Unless, okay, I think we're good now. Usually you're not allowed to like destroy any of these pieces. Oh wait, there's something in here too. A bunch of heads and Phoenix dust. Ooh. Wow. Wow. Should I give these heads to the, the laboratory or the laboratory cow, cow researchers? Cause they had like the Steve syndrome going on. <laughs> I think I probably should. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put those down there. This is fine. This is fine. Tomato seeds. Everyone needs to keep their favorite, their favorite seeds mixed in with uh you know i don't did i bring a bed mixed in with all, where they keep their heads don't they all right well we've explored this tower i think what we might start doing with the towers that we finish exploring is we might make it so that like i might i have a, a mage of some kind move in because i think that would be really fun painful gold sword and then maybe those mages could go ahead and they could sell us some of the rare items that we have a hard time like accessing and we could patch up the tower and over time even like have things kind of spiral around them and they could have like a little a little home of their own oh dark smiles i love let's build a zoo like i need to do more episodes of that they're gonna have a really cool update come out soon i've just been so busy look at this you guys these are beautiful I don't think I have a lot of these trees. Is that a turkey? I want to put a turkey in my yard. What is more autumnal than having a turkey in your yard? I don't have, I don't, I mean, we've got peafowl. We've got ducks wandering around in the yard. I want that gobbler. I just, I, I want him to just wander around my yard. All right. I need this to happen. Come here, friend. Come here. Oh, what? Oh, he dodged it. No, you don't. Okay, come on. Get in. Get in. Get in the safari net. Oh, I caught a different turkey. <laughs> there we go. We caught a turkey. All right. I'm pretty happy about that. Also, you guys need to stop following me around just because I'm wearing the flower headband, please. Little personal space chickens. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, collect up some of these trees. We won't stay here too long because these are not the trees we're looking for, but it's really fun because this is the first, <gasps> ooh, the lantern of the forest. Oh, this is the first time that I have been 
on a plant collecting expedition in years. Well, look at the size of those plants. Oh, this is so fun. Sunflower, this is delightful sunflower. Uh, ooh, ooh, a turkey tail. Okay, that I can't pass up a turkey tail in the turkey forest. So that's just too important. Uh, ooh, oh, another one of the appetites. The large foot dendrium. Oh my gosh. And then we'll gather this. Good, good, good. This is so much fun. It's been a long time. Watch out, Pigu. It has been a very long time since we have gone on a plant collecting expedition and there are so many turkey tails here. I am so happy with this. I will also accept these. Oh, oh no. Oh no, good. I got the weeping plants. I thought I destroyed them. All right, we're gonna use Sunflower's backpack uh, to go ahead and carry all of these extra plants. I also like these little, oh no. Okay, I need to get my, my shears out. Okay, let me put the turkey away and the safari net and all of the creepy head pieces that I found and the, the painful gold sword. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get my shears out. Oh man, this is so nostalgic. Do you guys remember how many shears I used to go through? <laughs> we would just power through so many of them in the attempts to go ahead and uh, collect all these plants. Let's see. So I think we have the maple saplings and I also have, do I not have any of the birch saplings? Interesting. And the birch saplings drop persimmons? That's really interesting. I wonder why the birch saplings drop persimmons. I'm not gonna ask too many questions, but, ooh, and what's this? What do we have here, friends? Is this a gooseberry? It's a gooseberry! Let's put some gooseberries into our, our yard too. Uh, I think you just have to go ahead and you have to mix a gooseberry with an oak, yep. So we'll get a couple more of these, whoops, a couple more of these gooseberries. Oh, I have missed this so much. Some harvest some wild gooseberries by encouraging the tree with the compost that we have cultivated. And we'll make a couple more gooseberries to go ahead and plant. And look at all these flowers we just found. What the heck, this is so cute. Are these buttercups? Marigolds. How could I have not thought about marigolds for an autumn like forest? Ooh, and these guys look really nice too. Okay, uh-oh, where'd sunflower go? That's my bad, I got a little distracted. All right, we'll turn that off. And then I'll look for sunflower. And we'll collect some more plants. <laughs> I don't know what baby turkeys look like. That's actually a good question. Do they just kind of look like uh, baby chicks? And Raven, so you just had a bunch of turkeys. There are, oh wait, uh oh, uh oh, hang on guys. I did get a little turned around. Give me just a minute. There's no need to panic. Okay, that's okay. That's a cheetah, but there's still no need to panic. Uh-oh. Okay, this is why I should follow my own trail of destruction. <laughs> oh no! No, this is even worse. Uh, Sunflower. Okay, she wasn't near those guys. Oh, turkey tail. All right, I'm gonna gather every turkey tail that I can find while we do this. Okay, wait. Okay, and I was chasing the turkey. We found her! Also, that was the moan of a zombie for the first time in years. What the heck? What? <gasps> it's my first zombie in years! Please don't sneak up and eat me from behind. I am literally defenseless because I have lost my armor. All right, we're gonna gather these pretty things. What on earth are they? We're gonna check out after we get out of here. All right, Sunflower. I have recalled danger. I don't like the taste of it. And we're gonna sit here for just a second. All right, so let's see. So we got the hummingbird bushes, my friends, and the winter berries on this little expedition. And Sunflower, you're gonna be a good girl and carry all this for us. Oh, 
yeah, Victoria, we do need to look for more turkeys. One of the things I think is really interesting about, oh, uh, about the turkeys is that I don't think I've ever seen a female variant of the turkey just kind of chilling around. But fun fact, if you guys look up like right now, cardinal couple, like the North American cardinal, and you look up like cardinal couple gifts, you will notice something. Almost all of the the gifts sold for uh, like people, just little little cute things that you can like, oh, it's a pair of cardinals on it and give to someone, use two male cardinals. Chips and I have noticed that like everywhere. Instead of having the duller colored female, they just have two male cardinals for these like cardinal couple gifts. And I just thought that was really funny. All right, so I think what we're gonna do now, Alari, have you noticed that too? Yeah, it's the gay cardinal sunflower. That's what we were always say. We're like, oh, yep. There's the gay, the gay cardinals again. People are really into those guys. I'm really into these bluebells. Oh, these are so pretty. I'm just gonna help myself to a few of these while we wait for the sun to go down so that I can get rid of this rain and we can get out of the rain and carry on. And you know what? We're far enough from the zoo. Sometimes I try not to take too many plants, but I think we're far enough from the zoo that I'm going to take these plants. They don't exactly respond, but we can just say in the future, if we ever, for some reason, expand out to this area and we're like, wow, that looks really picked over. We can go ahead and we'll do a rehabilitation of this zone. But for now, I'm just, I'm going to start stealing all the plants. Oh, I'm so sorry, Sunflower! Oh, no! Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, good, it was just a little bit of a bump. I was really worried that I just made my ride out of here mad at me and she was gonna fly off. <laughs> but do you guys ever do that, too, when you're, like, wandering around in Minecraft? Do you have a hard time just going ahead and destroying, like, the natural area? Or are you like, this area exists solely to collect resources? Because I have a little bit of a hard time because then I'm like, but I'm taking all the plants. I'm deforesting the zone. Gardener Gulfy! Just blame it on gulfers. I love that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, sunflower petals. Have you read those studies about female albatrosses? Like there's a lot of pairs of albatross females who raise their young together, which I think is so fascinating. All right. Oh, yeah. See, I think we're, we're hanging out in a very similar group. If you guys also like kind of hesitate to destroy the stuff. This is really cool though. Look at how pretty this is. And there's actually a beehive here. Ooh, and you can see where the biome changes. So the trees have two different colors. Can I get this beehive by chance? Sunflower, can you, can you land over here? No. All right, we'll, we'll go for easier beehives. Trying to catch a beehive that's like literally 50 feet in the air, probably not my smartest move. What are these trees? Do I have these trees? This is a temperate rainforest? Sunflower, let's land and I wanna see what these trees count as. Are they a unique sapling I can grow? Because I didn't know that and I kind of love them. All right. Hello, sheep sheep. Nest. This is so fun. I've never been in this section of our world. That's what I love about Minecraft is that you can keep going. Gosh, yeah. No, they're oak leaves and oak trees. But I wonder if they count as some sort of special tree. But what? Oh, a duck! Like, like, like a different species of duck. I want it. We can go ahead and we can give, we can give Jude a new duck. Oh my gosh, Sunflower, you're standing on top of a duck. <laughs> All right, we, we just got Jude a whole new duck. Like it's not an exotic bird's duck. That is actually a uh, mo creature's duck, which I haven't seen in years. Oh, Gardner, you think I died here? I might have died here. I could see myself having gotten on top of these trees and then falling off. All right, so where are we now? I don't have much longer to be able to stream. And 
I'm curious. Okay, so we're literally going into new lands, you guys. So we'll just keep going. Like this, I don't think these worlds, world bits have ever been generated in zoo crafting before. So we're just gonna keep going and exploring. Look at that. Wow. If you guys see anything particularly stunning, we can go ahead and try to give it like a landscape name. Yeah, look, we're in totally new territory. So I had a friend who really felt like these kinds of chunk spots were like super unsightly because it's evidence of where the world map like kind of broke when I had to rescue our, our Minecraft world. But I actually think they're really cool and I like to pretend like these cliff sides, we could just come in sometime and kind of rough them up a little bit with like the uh, mole fingers or the moss slugger, like our really big hammer. We could just kind of like roughen up the edges and then we could go ahead and say that it was just a tectonic plate that moved around. Oh, <laughs> yes to adventure. All right, let's keep going. Yeah, a fault line, exactly. Zubot, I'm so glad that you are like vibing with me there. Also sunflower, some geishal greens. And, and a grave. Okay, I forgot we have the grave mod installed because my friend Ben was really into like dangerous mods. Um, oh, and I only brought some cookies to eat. This might be trouble. Okay, we're gonna be okay. Don't worry, Pigu, I'm not gonna eat you. Uh, okay, I have some lemonade. We're okay. We'll survive off cookies and lemonade. Yeah, magic. Yeah, plate tectonics. I love that. That's what I think, because I think that looks really cool. All right, and yeah, my friend Ben, back when we had this as a server, put these really spooky like graveyard mods on. They add a lot of cool features, but they also mean that these random graves will spawn throughout the world. And this says that Denise drowned after 62 days. And what you can do is you can actually like dig the grave up, like I just did. <laughs> Which may have seemed like a weird thing to do. And th this is like, okay, Denise, you can you can rip back in peace, actually. Uh, and I'm just going to leave that there. <laughs> but sometimes you need to go through and remove them because they can spawn like mega zombie hordes if you don't take care of the graves. And I like to tie that into like our village of light sort of lore and changing the zombies back into people. By the way, did you guys know there's a game called Zombie Lab that's gonna come out where you change zombies back into humans? I love it. I can't wait to play it because that's what we do with the Village of Light for years. Also, this is one of the most beautiful horses I've ever seen. Also, that was a dog? Also, there's some golden retrievers here. <laughs> or Labradors. <laughs> All right, we'll have to go ahead and figure out what to do about those guys later because we're looking for our maple trees right now. Oh, and farm for your life. Yeah, Sharon, I remember that. That was fun. Oh, Gardner Green, you remember the graveyard raids? Yes. I think I always died. And one day I hope to like collect up all of these. Um, oh, there's a bunch of stray border collies like all of these random dogs that are all over the world and we can like trade them to a dog trainer or something who will be able to like take care of them. All right, come on, Chunks. The world is so cranky. It's like, this is the first time I've ever had to be here. Do you know what I have to do? Ooh, it's like, I have to load in so much stuff, Siri. How could you do this to me? Not only do I need to give you stray dogs, not only do I need to give you animals of every type imaginable, but I also have to go ahead and give you like cave systems. I'm asking a lot of the world. Also, let's actually check out what these trees are really quickly. Hello, friend. Dark oak, would you say? Hang on, sunflower. These guys look really good. Yeah, the, the glitchy, the glitchy time memories. That didn't drop any saplings. Ooh, is that the side moss? Oh my gosh. Be still my heart, it is. 
It is the moss. I forgot this could go on the side of dead trees. All right, I'm gonna cut down this dead tree because I think that this would also be good for our autumn garden to go ahead and have this wood. We're actually, you know what? Maybe that's one of the things we can do with all of the weird graves we find. One day we could make a gravekeeper NPC and the gravekeeper could go ahead and give us some of like the dead wood and other stuff that is kind of hard to find in the world. I also like to make those trades with our NPCs because then I don't have to just strip the world like, like a strip mine. <laughs> <laughs> I can go ahead and leave some of the places pretty. Uh, that's one of the reasons I love the NPC mod and setting up those NPCs. So that then every time I need a plant, it's fun to go on plant expeditions, but it's also really nice not to have to like destroy everything in sight. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, get this tree. Here we go. Yeah, rehoming some of the mortician villagers. Gardener Green, I actually forgot we had those villagers. But all right, we'll keep flying for a little bit here, friends, but I am going to actually get winding down for bed because I have a lot more work to do in the morning too. But I'm actually curious, what are your guys' plans for the weekend? All right, is that enough? That's about a stack of, no, we'll get a little over a stack of dead wood and then we'll move on. Oh, Magic, thank you. Thank you for the tea time. I'm gonna have some water. No? Please? Did you guys hear that crocodile? <laughs> Why does it sound like it's getting closer? Sunflower? <gasps> There's a crocodile right there! Wait a second! When's the last time I found a crocodile? You guys, should I catch him? Should we go ahead and catch him? Where am I gonna put him? I don't think that, that Jude needs to have a moat with a crocodile in it. Wait, where'd he go? Huh. Ooh, and classwork. <laughs> Alara, you're gonna redraw one of your favorite characters as a llama? That's awesome. Let's see, I think this weekend, I'm actually planning on trying to play a bunch of games. I'm gonna do our warrior cat series. All right, can I get him? Yes, okay, we caught that guy. I was a little worried he was gonna try to eat me for a second, but we managed. Uh, but I wanna try to do the warrior cat series again. It just takes a ton of work. And then I also wanna try working on um, Potion Permit which is a cute looking new game, Wild Flowers. Basically a lot of the farming and cozy games that have come out over the past like couple weeks, I'm gonna like taste test a few of them and see if I like them. Also, now that I caught the crocodile, we'll go ahead and sleep and then we'll explore a little bit more. Whoops. <laughs> All the warrior cats. Yeah, Moon, we have a lot of warrior cat stuff on our channel if you didn't know. Uh, we have a Sims 3 series that went on for years and is like still to this day one of the favorite memories of a lot of our channel uh, and we'll hopefully one day make a return in a new in a new way. Gosh freaking darn it I'm gonna have to go ahead and get these blocks. All right there we go and then we've got like cat tales we've got the warrior cats untold tales it, it, it kind of I wouldn't say it got out of hand but if you like cats, there's a lot of there's a lot of options there. There we go. Oh my gosh, the sunflower petals you played unpacking. Oh my goodness. I loved unpacking so much. I was really stunned at how emotional unpacking made me feel. And it really let me know that like the genre of pixel games does have a place in like the modern time. There was a time where I used to get YouTube comments that basically said uh, that the only real future of games are the hyper-realistic like 3D games. And I really think that there's actually a lot of different art styles for games that can be quite fun, including the pixel art. Unpacking is one of my favorite games. Also, I love the pixel art in Let's Build a Zoo. Also, those are Komodo dragons. Okay, hang on, Sunflower. It looks like we're coming up on a big ocean. So we're gonna give it a little flyover and we're gonna just cross our fingers that it won't last forever. Oh good, it didn't. 
Oh my gosh, is this one of the first wild cherry blossom biomes we've seen in ages? Oh, this is so beautiful. Let's give it just a second to think about coming into existence and then we'll go ahead and look it over. Oh, she a wolf. I, you know, I've heard so many good things about Pixel Pets actually. Hey, Kaden. Oh my gosh, it's so cool magic to see how many people have like warrior cat stories from really loving the series and creating like original characters for it. This is so cool. This is the first time in a long time I have come across a new cherry blossom biome. Oh, oh my gosh, look, and there's a tower here. Okay. Oh my gosh, there's two towers. Are you telling me we need to have fairy inspired? Yes, yes, indeed, Sunflower. We need to have like fairy inspired mages who live in a cherry blossom forest and have a extension of the Zudestia Zoo where we could use the teleporter system to come out here and they have a whole bunch of like red crowned cranes and other beautiful birds and animals from Japan, like the adorable little flying squirrels they have that look like squeaky toys. Yes, I think that's what you're telling me. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna go raid these towers. Let's also put a waypoint here because I feel like this is just so pretty. Yeah, the world is huge. And it's full of bunnies? Sunflower. This is ridiculous. This is too pretty. Where the heck am I? It's this gorgeous little island. Even kind of looks a little like Japan if you sort of squint a bit. <laughs> we should put a couple exhibits here to kind of celebrate some of the, the iconic animals in Japan, I think. So let me add in a little waypoint. So the Magic Cherry Blossom Island. <laughs> That's literally what it is. <laughs> there we go. This is too amazing. All right, let's wrap up tonight with raiding. And now that everything's loaded, it's all fast again. With raiding the Magic Cherry Blossom Towers and really hoping they don't kill us. All right, Sunflower, let's do this. Uh, let's do this very carefully, Sunflower. Please don't drop me from the tower. All right, stay there. Thank you. Uh, ooh, okay, this one might be actually kind of dangerous. So let's do it, guys. We'll wrap up our evening either dying in a horrible, like, explosive death. Okay, not dead yet. Or finding more wonderful treasure like the Sword of Pain. Ooh, a diamond. Also rotten flesh. I mean, reduce, reuse, recycle, I suppose. All right, this is a cute little tower. Let me go ahead and put some of the stuff I don't have any away to put. Never mind. Uh, all right, let's put these away. Yeah, some dog food. Okay. That is a trap. Ow! <laughs> Literally said that is a trap. What do I do? I walk into it. Um. Can I, can I get through? Okay, you can't destroy these blocks. Yeah, you can't destroy these blocks. The tower is enchanted. It is a, Ow. <laughs> okay, enough! <laughs> but I'm not actually taking any damage. Am I actually foolproof from, from, like, danger here? Interesting. Yeah, all the particles floating around worry me too, Wessie. Let's see if we need to come at it from a different angle. Sometimes we're lucky and there's like a window I can go in. Boy, these look really threatening. This is discerningly threatening for a place that's just surrounded by adorable bunnies. <gasps> what? What? No, I can't. Oh my gosh. Let me, do you guys see that? Do you see that? This is the most treasure I've ever seen in my life. I have never seen that many treasures in here. Like what the heck? There's three Items. I've never seen that many items in one of these towers. Oh, hello goat. Oh, don't drop anything around this goat. The goat will literally eat like our best weapons. 
They will- it, the, the goat is the ultimate destroyer. Uh-oh. Okay. 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 I'm sure this is gonna be fine. I'm sure this is gonna be fine. A tower that happens... ...to have... Are those rats? No, the goat. Don't even joke about that. Don't even joke about that. The goat. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Do I have Aster Seed over here? Where did I put Aster Seed? Where is my... We, I, I have never in my life needed to have an emergency, an emergency chocobo transport. Because of where we blew up, my one quote unquote fail safe to keep us safe from ever losing our stuff like that is the fact that you're supposed to spawn a grave because of where we blew up by a creeper that just showed up out of nowhere. We did not have that fail safe. So hang on. Okay. Okay. All right. Not cool. All right. Got to fix some things over here. Okay. Do I have Aster Seed over here? Do I have Aster Seed over here? I do not. Okay. So where is Aster Seed? Aster Seed is probably with the giraffes. All right. To the giraffes. Okay. I, I need emergency chocobos. I need emergency chocobos. Yeah, none of those guys are there. So Aster Seed, that sweetheart, that's Garden Mimi. Yes, hello. I don't need angry sheep poo right now. I, I need my flying. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Dang it. Okay. I can't even. Okay. Mm, nope. Not going to risk it. Okay. So let me think. I actually need to make it to the giraffes because the giraffes are where I think I left Aster Seed. And if I didn't have Aster Seed there. Oh my gosh. All right, no, 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 Siri, you don't need to cut my way through. How long till things despawn, friends? 10 minutes? Oh my gosh, stop. Okay. Five minutes? I don't like that. Yeah, Aster Seed isn't in the nest. I can't believe that. Is this? Is this the way that we're going to have to restart everything? Is this the beginning? The great quest to go fetch Sunflower? And have to like restore all of our stuff? Oh, I'm hungry! The screams of, of the cursed peafowl are appropriate at the moment. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, okay. The chunks are not loaded, so you think I'm fine. Okay, all right, yeah. The chunks aren't loaded, I, I I forgot about that. I need food. I, I, I can't believe this. This is hubris. That's true, at least the rest of the armor isn't lost. I'm, I'm emotionally recovering for a split second. I, I thought, uh-uh, I'm just gonna cheat there. And then I thought, no, that breaks the spirit of zoo crafting. I've never done that to fix like something that's gone wrong. Also now I have escaped hummingbirds, stay. And I don't wanna start now because one of the things that zoo crafting has taught me is that when things go really wrong, when you roll with it, sometimes you end up finding the best adventures you ever had. So gotta run over to the giraffes. 
Also need to note, I need to update the texture for whatever's going on back there. I know it's an impromptu zoo tour speed run. <laughs> oh my gosh. If I, if, I really hope I know where I left Aster Seed. I think he's with the giraffes. I should have grabbed one of the teleportation units to go get to him. Uh, also, this is one of my campsites. <gasps> There's food here. Please. Okay, garden soup, chocolate. Okay, oh my gosh. I'm raiding this campsite for whatever it's got. Uh, snake? No, thank you. All right, that's one of our old campsites that we made while we were building things here a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Inkwell, right? Yeah, it is kind of like very speed running. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so let's talk through best case scenarios, worst case scenarios. Best case scenarios, Aster Seed is where I think I left him here with the giraffes. And we can go ahead, jump on his back, and yeet ourselves. Uh, okay, come on, keep going. And yeet ourselves to his mate, Sunflower. Worst case scenario, Aster Seed is not here. And we actually have to find a way to go ahead and either walk, run, fly. Can I ride on the back of a giraffe? Ride our way across an ocean. And please, Aster Seed, where did I leave you? Finding Aster Seed was actually one of my... One of my concerns. Uh-oh. Don't do it, 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 don't do it. It did it. I forgot sometimes if I go in there too fast and I haven't preloaded it, it'll crash. Okay. You know what? This is fine. This is fine. There was a lot of stuff in my inventory. Did I earn that because I haven't been here for years? Probably. Am I gonna have to? <laughs> okay. So you're telling me that all that stuff's probably gone now because once you leave the game, it crashes. That was a lot of stuff. That was a lot of stuff. But you know what? That's okay. No, the old save, like, no, no, uh, this, this will be okay. I do have old backups, but I don't think it's worth it because I actually am starting to, to bounce back. I am starting to feel vibrant. I am starting to feel completely emotionally recovered because friends, I didn't know how to go ahead and start this next season of zoo crafting. I didn't know how to step forward into our world again with all of you. I didn't know what what was going to be our quest, what was going to be the first goal we had. That's why I have been writing down things on the list. That's why we were kind of doing a tour. The answer is rescue Sunflower. The answer is go get Sunflower and have to rebuild my tools and have to rebuild like basically everything that we were holding um, because that's the way it goes sometimes. And that's okay. Because I actually think, yeah, gather up all the family. Gardener Golfi, you are 1000%, 1000% on point. Also, I don't think Astro Seed is here. <laughs> And I actually think this is going to be fun. 
I actually think, look, look, because what, what can we do now? We just have to embrace this. This is a survival world with very, very rare moments where for only cosmetic purposes, we will snag something in creative, like setting up an NPC. I'm really proud that I have used like just survival to get this far. And we're not going to start breaking that now. No, Astro Seed is not here. We are not going to start breaking that now. So I actually think what you guys just saw was the beginning of a new era of zoo crafting. Because now I know what I'm actually going to try to do. <laughs> We're going to start with a huge expedition, literally thousands of meters away, to round up Sunflower and maybe conquer that tower. Oh no, that's a skeleton. All right, let's keep moving. <laughs> and we're gonna remake some weapons and we're gonna kiss goodbye all of the fossils I had because literally every single fossil, I was moving chest with all those fossils. Every single fossil I have is now gone. The only thing that's gonna remain are actually the things in Sunflower's backpack. So yeah, that's 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 amazing. Story, when the plates shifted and split the zoo, it scared the animals away. So now you have to bring them back. That's adorable. <laughs> exactly, Adelaide. I, I that's how I'm feeling right now. I am not going to break I am not going to, 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 I mean, there's literally nothing we can do about it now. Also, what the ever loving heck? Right, to do list. Fix Asian jungle transporter. Right, on the list. <laughs> Okay, we gotta fix those cursed teams. I've gotta fix this bamboo like texture. It's driving me nuts. So I just I, I don't like having that texture. I have a much prettier thatch texture I want to use. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and yeah, we're gonna have to get Lily and Tate. We're gonna have to stock our pockets all over again. I'm I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to rebuild my backpacks. I'm gonna have to get all of those fossils back at some point. Hey, Desiree. But I, I can't lie to you guys. I'm going to have to tell you the truth. I'm actually really excited. Have you ever purged your house or like something by accident and you realize like, oh, I'm not as upset as I thought I would be because now I get a chance to start fresh. I didn't want to start a whole new zoo. I didn't want to start a whole new world because this place has way too much meaning. However, I think we may very well uh, have found ourselves a way to start fresh by literally losing everything and having one of the most important members of our family. I mean, they're all, all members of our family are important, but having Sunflower lost thousands of meters away from home. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we were just talking about how restarting a world is fun. Uh, so we haven't restarted a world. Hello, oh, this is perfect. But we have gone ahead and we have purged ourselves of any unnecessary links to the past. And also a lot of animals were just gonna say escaped from those safari everythings. I have to rebuild my safaris. I have to rebuild my safari catcher. I have to rebuild my safari balls. Those are so expensive. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. I, you know what? I know what I'm gonna work on recording tomorrow. This is amazing. There we go. And that poor unnamed duck. You know what? They all, we're just gonna have to use our imagination and say they all escaped from those safari nets because uh, otherwise that creeper has a lot to answer for. Wow. All right, guys. I think this is good. I, 
I am shocked I didn't think just get rid of my entire inventory and start over uh, as a way to refresh the zoo crafting series. But that is why I trusted the world to give me what I needed. And I guess it did. I just thought I needed adorable maple flowers and mushrooms. Apparently not. Apparently we're not planting an autumn garden right now. <laughs> okay, well, thank you guys. Uh, I think I think it's time for me to 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 have a little bit of time to sit down uh, and I'm I I'm gonna save picking one of these birds for another day I think because I I, I don't think that it is fair to add something to our to-do list when I don't even have a set of shears or an axe or food <laughs> so i love this bit of lore this is gonna be awesome this is this is gonna be very interesting indeed but thank you guys so much for joining me this is so amazing thank you for being so patient for the last couple months with me not being able to like do as many series on the main channel or stream the twins are okay i'm so freaking happy about that now I definitely need to make our poor green family start having some sim babies, but I need to let my voice rest and I need to sleep on this. And I have a feeling you guys are about to see a lot of zoo crafting episodes uh, because I have a lot of motivation to do stuff right now. <laughs> like legitimately, the to-do list literally self-destructed. It literally self-destructed. We didn't even need to set it on fire. It blew itself up. <laughs> uh, this, by the way, is the Patreon postcard that's going out this month. I was actually thinking, you know, maybe that theme of feeling overwhelmed and having so much to do and the to-do list and all of the envelopes doesn't fit anymore because I'm feeling so much calmer now. I My sister's okay. The twins are okay. Mentally, I'm doing a lot better because I'm not like, oh my gosh, is my sister going to die or the baby's going to die? Uh, like, my family's all actually doing great for once, which is great for my mom's chronic health. Like, Chips and I are doing great. There's a hurricane, but I don't have to worry about it. So I actually was looking at this, you know, earlier today and I was like, you know, life just isn't as chaotic. I'm getting more organized. I'm everything's becoming calmer. Maybe like ah, oh, this was this was fun, but you know, it doesn't really fit emotionally anymore. I take it back. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> I'm going to go to bed and we're going to have a great time with our new zoo crafting adventure. And I will be very excited for you guys to join me. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. I don't know when I'm going to stream next because I thought I was going to stream soon to do more zoo crafting stuff. But I think I need to batch record it so that I can go get sunflower and like restart so many things. <laughs> I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and I do think we need to have some backup golden chocobos. I, I have no idea where I left Aster Seed. I actually think he's at the campsite and that's really far away. And I, I remember thinking, oh, when I need to go get Aster Seed, I'll just fly back with Sunflower. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Xander. And thank you guys so much for your sweet messages tonight and just all of your support. We're going to be creating so many adventures together for years to come. And it means everything to me that we still have that same vibe. Like we're vibing, planty chaos vibing. I wasn't even trying to be a chaotic tonight. And life said, LOL, that's what you are. Here you go. <laughs> All right, good night, everybody. Oh, I will see you next time. Um, and just keep your eyes peeled. I don't know when the episodes are going to start going up because I have to record a lot of other things too. But it's going to be fun. Oh, and Moombies! Thank you! You are the last bird of our night, a barn swallow. I'm going to go lay down. Bye, guys. <laughs>